progress. Okay, uh, it's my jury. It's now the classic tune because I'm just waiting for the sick tune. Okay. Oh, Maria, Maria. <laughs> Maria, 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 hey, COVID X. <laughs> All right. Hello. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome to our relaunch of Come, Let's Talk with me, Kasim Kaira. It's been a long while since Ramadan. I think it's been two months that we took a break away from this conversation. But thank you very much for joining us once again. Uh, today, we are relaunching. It's been a difficult three, nearly four weeks ago that have been very difficult, especially for Uganda, that is now facing its second wave of the COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, which has claimed nearly 1,000 people up to date. The situation in Uganda now has been worse and worsening. And as a result, the government, President Yoweri Museveni, announced the decision or took a decision to lock down uh, the country as a way of trying to, trying to control the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Up to a thousand people, as I said, probably close to a thousand people uh, have died so far. The second wave, actually, in comparison to the first wave, where about only 300 to 400 people had died, uh, the numbers have grown, getting to nearly 1,000. And the situation is getting dire. Hospitals are getting inundated. Finding a hospital space now, hospital bed, especially for intensive care units, is getting increasingly difficult. You're welcome. It's calm. Let's talk with me, Kasim Kaira, live on 75W Radio, as well as live on Umma Connected via Zoom and on YouTube, streaming live. And you can follow us. You can send us a message uh, during this conversation because we will be hearing your particular experiences, your personal experiences. Nearly every family now has been affected by the tragedy that the COVID-19 pandemic has become. While many managed to survive the first round, uh, and actually caught COVID and even survived it, the second wave has come with a kind of a near punishment uh, that it has come up with, and that has actually uh, brought in the magnitude of the crisis that the country has to deal with. It's a global situation. Many countries have had their second waves and managed to overcome them, but when it comes to poor countries where health systems are even in dire straits, it actually makes the whole situation much more complicated. Nearly everyone among us has lost a close relative or a friend or an acquaintance. It was difficult probably in the first round or the first wave to see that the second wave has come with such toughness and pain that actually we have ended up there. Many families, I actually know a family of 18 people who, who attended a funeral, a family funeral, and as a result, all 18 people are now uh, suffering from COVID-19. Four of these have passed on. Uh, 14 are uh, at different levels. Some have managed to recover, but others are at different levels of the pain and, and the strands of, of the COVID-19. And in certain families have lost nearly four people. Another family has lost uh, four people within a span of uh, one and a half weeks. So they've had to bury these people just back to back. Main cause being that uh, our, our communities have not yet understood the whole concept of self-isolation. Because within African communities, when you hear that someone is ill or someone is sick, the first reaction is to go to visit them. And in trying to go and visit them, what actually happens is if they are suffering from COVID, likelihood is you will pick the virus and then you will spread the virus. So you look at the R rate probably might be higher in Uganda, for example, in comparison to, say, European countries where the R rate was, say, at two or three in UK. In Uganda, the number might actually be much, much bigger. We have lost numerous people. Actually, probably as a way of just looking at the magnitude of this, we try to just get a montage of some of the people that we have. If you can have a play of that, Isma, please, if you can have a play of that particular video, just to show you some of the people that we have lost, religious leaders, business people, no more ordinary people, farmers, and so on. All of these have been affected by the COVID pandemic. Let's just see some of the faces that may be familiar to you. Big names in Uganda that have lost their lives as a result of this second wave of the COVID-19. 
Uh, Isma, no, no, not this one. It's the montage, please. It's the montage of the people who have died. Uh, Isma, it's not this one. It's the montage, please. And as I was saying, it's just some of those individuals, people that we know, faces that are familiar to us. Sometimes when you hear about, you know, diseases or viruses or pandemics, they seem far-fetched. So you can hear them in different places, in other places and not in the places that you actually know. But when it comes to people that you know, people that you have related with, on the 30th of May, for example, I attended the school reunion out of, you know, these so far, three of the people that we attended the school reunion after 30 years of not meeting have died as a result of this. Two weeks later, they've succumbed to COVID-19. This is how close, this is how fresh you know, the story goes. People that you know you have spoken to, people that you have had conversation with, uh, with and you end up here in this particular instance. Isma, let me know, please, when you find uh, the, the, the montage, please, so that we can see some of the faces that will be familiar to many of us people that we know, people that we have heard about, uh, people that we have probably related with in different ways. Uh, some people, you know, some much closer than others. But in all these instances, this is how close the story has gone. Everybody feels it so closely because it has touched at the very core of our story. Yes, uh, Isma, we can go ahead, please. I can't hear any sound in the background, but you'll see that these, most of these are familiar faces. People that we know, this one, you know, was a very, very familiar face. This one actually is one of the four people that died from the same family. This is Haji General Parts. Many people benefited from him during his days when he was a rich man. This is uh, Fefe Ka, chairman LC5, who hadn't even taken to his office. This is Hudu Karuma. This is one of the students who went to school, sat on the same table, on the same desk with him, and we just buried him yesterday. But one, this one is a fresh one. This is from the same same family, uh, the Haji Jafar Center in Barara family. It's just been horrendous. I mean, they, they, the faces, the people that you know, people that you have related with. You look at the funerals. You know, something that is very painful about this disease is how it has detached us from the family connections that we had, you know, people that you knew, people that in, in whose wills you were, someone saying you are the person who will lay me, you know, to rest, you are the person who will carry my casket, you are the person who will do this for me and you can't do that under the COVID situation. It's a very, very painful, uh, you know, uh, occurrence now facing the country. Religious leaders have not been faced, Muslim, Christian, you know, all of them, it didn't matter. COVID has come in, you know, with that strength, with that painful power, you know, that's taking young people, you know, very, very young people, very enterprising people, people with a lot of future ahead of them. And then suddenly it's all brought to, this was my former teacher, Sheikh Kasim Ramaban, may God forgive him. This is Sheikh Mbadja, again, another one from a big family, the eldest in the family of Haji Mbadja in Chazanga. Kasita chairman and then Haji K.Y., those who know Nabugabu Abdil will know this man very much. All of these are people that have succumbed to COVID and particularly this second wave of uh, the pandemic. It's a painful, painful, painful uh, instance that we all have to contend with. But then something else, uh, what I will be intending to hear today are these personal stories. Have you lost someone? Did you lose a family member? Would it be that one of the people that we have seen just from the clip that was playing is a member of your family, is a friend of yours? I would like to hear these personal stories. Uh, Sheikh Zaid, I know you're one of the people that have lost people in the week, nearly two people during this particular period in time. Uh, are you fine to get us talking about this while we get anybody else on? Sheikh Zaid, are you there? Yes, yes Sheikh Kasim. Uh, yes, please. Welcome, welcome to come. Let's talk with me, Kasim Kaira. We are talking COVID, the pandemic, the second wave. Uh, I'm sure you've lost some relative of sorts during these last three weeks. I have lost now um, five. Today I've lost two. Allah Akbar. Inna uh, inna 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 inna. Remember I lost, remember I lost, um, could I have lost two the same day? Remember I lost two in three days. Yeah, my auntie and my sister. Today I've lost my niece and my cousin. Uh, 
um, but alhamdulillah, and many friends. And as you've uh, uh, showed us the, the, the video and the photos, most of the colleagues you know, because we went to the same school, I know them. Um, uh, it has claimed uh, so many lives. Uh, it has really affected us. Um, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, admits them in Jannah and uh, waves this away, washes this away. Whoever hasn't been affected, alhamdulillah, thank Allah for that. Uh, many families have been affected. Uh, I'm sure you have been affected, Sheikh Kaira. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, but I just wanted to find out, Zaid, from you. Um, how how does it feel for you to lose a person when you're not, you know, like in Uganda, unable to, you know, visit them in hospital, unable to even go for burial? Because for a Muslim and for a Ugandan, for that matter, for an African in general, going and escorting someone to their last resting place is one of the fundamental things that we hold with such high value. How has it been for you to lose all these relatives that you could not go for body uh, to come and see me to be able to even see them or help them or send them off? Uh, Allah, it's painful. It's painful, uh, Sheikh Kaira. Uh, it's very painful, especially uh, uh, you remember my uh, a brother here, Babu, who passed away. Um, but Usama managed to go, I didn't. Um, but, I mean, we are in the same situation now, uh, Sheikh Kaira. Even, uh, even those ones in Uganda are just like me. They can't, they, they can't travel. Even if it's uh, to take someone to Muria, 20 of them will go. They will stay home just like me. So um, uh, it doesn't feel uh, good. And, and I, would, I would love them to stay home uh, to protect themselves. Yeah. yeah. So if it takes, if, if that's what it takes for 10 people to bury someone, stay home. Yeah. Um, uh, that hasn't affected me because uh, it's, uh, it's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yeah. we have to protect ourselves. Yeah. yeah? But it is, uh, of course, uh, Chanaku knew that. We can't, uh, you know, the, when you go, when you bury someone, uh, you get that satisfaction, yeah? yeah? It's like treating someone, um, someone is on their deathbed, uh, like you've been in Uganda with your mom, your mom has been sick, uh, you've been there, you, 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 you yeah. um, but once, what, when you're not there, it, there is a gap, yeah? You'll always feel, that maybe I wasn't there for them. Maybe I would have done something uh, better. But alhamdulillah. There, there is an issue to do with closure because quite often when you lay someone to rest, when, when you go and escort someone, because I was lucky that I managed to actually send off quite a number of the people who have died, of course, under very uh, secure conditions, trying as much as possible to adhere to the, the SOPs, the, the standard operational procedures. But there is that kind of closure that you receive when you see, when you, when you send someone, when you help to send someone off. That lack of closure that, that now you are unable to get because you have not attended someone's funeral. Of course, that sort of sits on you as a burden in a lot of ways. Is that something that you feel that probably if you are there, like you, 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 you're saying, it would have made a lot of difference if you were there. Uh, to tell you the truth, KK, um, I'm not, I'm not feeling, uh, you know, with my mom, with my mother, I wasn't there, but it wasn't the pandemic. So I feel the gap. I'm, I'm like, I wish I was there, but with my brothers, my sisters are passing away now. I, I don't feel that gap because that's, everyone is just like me. You're not supposed to go there. Yeah, so you stay home, you do Salatul Janazah in your house and you pray for them. That's all you can do. So I don't, I don't really feel that gap. Yeah, but um, um, of course you're saddened. Uh, I, they, 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 what I feel is, for example, you get people like the people you just showed us, yeah? Big people, the sheikhs. Imagine Sheikh Qasim being buried, yeah? Just by a few... By a it, would have taken, it, would have, it, would, it would have taken thousands of people to bury him. Absolutely. Yeah? Just imagine. Yeah. But now, 20 people, 30 people to bury him. You feel. Uh, right. 
robbed. You feel robbed. Yeah, you feel exactly. Like you feel kind robbed. of incomplete. Yeah, they, they, there's a kind of robbery that happens as, as a result of that. Thank you very much, Zaid. I'll just move on so that we can bring in more people into the conversation. Remember, this program is just about us having a conversation. It's not about me talking to you. It's about us talking about the situation. And today we are talking COVID-19, the pandemic, especially the second wave that has really hit Uganda very badly, but it's not just Uganda. It's actually several countries within the region, you know, that have uh, that, 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 that that have faced this particular situation. And actually, I can see that one of the guests that we have today that I would like to grab while I get the Ugandans ready to come on uh, is a, a man, Richard Salu, who is a Tanzanian. He's a Tanzanian friend based in the Netherlands, but uh, Tanzania is one of the countries that were even talking about, you know, COVID uh, nineteen as uh, as a pandemic was kind of taboo until now the new the new president has sort of taken matters in her own hands and dealt with that. Uh, so Richard, how has the situation been in Tanzania while we, we delve into the Ugandan situation? Yeah, uh, Kasim, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for uh, organizing this, uh, this kind of, uh, of a conference, online conference. Uh, uh, in Tanzania, uh, uh, actually, we are like in the in the third wave now. Mm -hmm. It's really not a, like a second wave, because in this first wave, uh, uh, we lost a, a lot of uh, prominent figures in Tanzania, uh, as far as I know. And in the second wave, again, we lost some uh, prominent figures. Um, uh, I would not like to, to mention them, but uh, um, a lot, a lot of them. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, uh, during that time, our government is, is, was a little bit uh, skeptical in, 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 in coming out and, and, and explain and mention the people who have been uh, succumbed to, to, to the COVID-19. But... Uh, um, now uh, things have uh, uh, we 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 are really we really uh, experience some sort of of changing uh, under this uh, new government. Of when you say change, Richard, when you say change, uh, do you mean in yeah. terms of approach, in terms of dealing with the whole uh, pandemic? You know? Yes, yes, the the approach is has really uh, has changed. And uh, although our president, Samia Suluhu Hassani, does not mention, she always says that me and the former uh, leader, we are, the, we, are, we are like one, we are like one people, <laughs> one person. But yeah. she really, the, the approach she's mm. trying to push is really very, very different. Now mm. you can see these big people, they wear masks mm -hmm. and uh, she kind of open up in terms of the data uh, about the COVID COVID nineteen and and in Tanzania actually we are we are experiencing the the third wave. It's not mm. it's not really the second wave. But Tanzania has yeah. not in any way locked down. You know, despite all the changes that have come in, the government has not come into you know with the, the draconian measures of trying to lock down mm. an entire nation. People have continued to go about their business despite being warned about what what they need to do. Has does that help? Has that helped at all? Yeah, but uh, for sure, to be honest with you, Kasim, for African countries, mm -hmm. maybe if we 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 take uh, uh, we take ex um, South Africa is an ex exceptional, mm -hmm. but all this the rest of Africa, excepting this the North, the Arab countries in Africa, it's very very hard to lock down an African country. Because uh, people depend on daily wages to get meal mm. and the, all the basic needs. So if you lock down people, yet you don't provide them with me, with the, all of those essential things that they need the, uh, as a human being. Yeah. That's a really very difficult. That's mm. the real approach really I like. Uh, even the way our former president Magufuli uh, implemented it when he said that he would not lock down the country because he really knew that he would not give bread to the people. He would not give food to the people. Mm. That, that's why, of course, that's why also this, uh, our, our, our current president now, she's still continuing 
with that same approach, although she tried to modify, to, uh, to make it some diplomacy with the Western world and things like that. And it, that's how we are moving. But I think even in Uganda, mm -hmm. lockdown is not a, a, is, is it's not not a way for well, African that's countries. Definitely, Richard, that, that, that's something that we are going to be tackling now. Thank you very much for now. I'll just okay. bring in more people so that we can continue the conversation. Tulashkuru sana. Thank you very, very much as, for giving us an insight as, on, on what is happening in Tanzania. Uh, now, I'd like to get in some ladies in here. I've just had men talking. Uh, it's been men having a conversation so far. I'd like to bring in some ladies, at least to sort of hear the experience, but it's more the personal stories. Uh, Mariam Feza, if you don't mind, please. Mariam, could you unmute yourself, please? What's the story? What, what... KK, KK, KK yeah. let me take this opportunity to inform you that uh, uh, Farida Nakazi was in the house, yeah? I saw her and I was trying to <laughs> ask her to unmute herself and she, she did I just, it, but I, 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 I knew I'll how, how, how to get to her. Thank you I very much. I see now and she joined. She's there. <laughs> now I was trying to get her to unmute and she, she wasn't really unmuting. Farida, can I come to you while I get uh, Mariam Feza to get ready? No, oh, actually, uh, okay. she had unmuted and I, and I muted her again. Uh, Farida, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for joining us. Actually, I was trying to get you to unmute. Could you unmute, please? Uh, I'm trying to get you to unmute, Farida. I can see you talking, but I can't hear you. Um, Farida, could you unmute yourself, please? Oh, I did. Okay. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaamu alaikum wa Thank you very much for joining the conversation. How are you? I am honored. I'm very well. I'm I mean, actually still in office trying to yeah. catch up with something. I can see Last your minute. eyes are tired. <laughs> they are. You <laughs> well, should, should be getting ready. You are in the heart and, 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 and peak of, of what is happening really in, in Uganda at the moment. Uh, and uh, yes. for, for, for those who have joined us and don't know, Faida is a big star name in Uganda on NTV oh, television. Uh, she's a news presenter, but also runs a program that is very popular, Masuza Mutia, that brings uh, different people on board. So Richard, you you, you can meet uh, Farida. Uh, she's here. Farida, thank you very much. Uh, what has you been your experience to... so far with the COVID-19 situation? Um, uh, I, I happen to uh, contract it in the first wave. I'm still self this wave, but it was uh, quite an experience that left me a little bit traumatized. It's something I had to go through for some time until much later when I, I, I got over it. Uh, right now, uh, it's scary because everywhere you tune, it has actually um, left me torn between being so much on social media and, and quitting. So I just go there to do my posting, read a very few posts and then run away because most of the time you find RIP, RIP coming into you and it's scary, it continues to scare you. Mm -hmm. And yet work must go on, for example, for some of us who are supposed to be on in service most of the time mm -hmm. as a responsibility to tell everybody what's happening. But yeah, we are still moving on. There is uh, money that has been uh, dispersed or will be soon uh, dispersed to help out on the people that are still stuck. People are still insisting, despite the lockdown, they are insisting they need to work, and it's understandable. Because Farida, most I'll, of I'll, I'll take you. I'll talk to you on that money thing. I'll just go back slightly, just in terms of the the line of work that we do as journalists, mm. we are frontline workers, just like medical doctors and so on. And journalists have stayed in the line of fire, if I may use the word, just in terms of. We go to the hospitals to report on these particular situations. You come and you're dealing with these very people who, for example, have gone for funerals and you have to go and film there. What would you say has been the, the biggest challenge for the media, for journalists for that matter? Because especially now that we are beginning to see some journalists beginning to die from the, from the pandemic itself. Uh, it's uh, Indeed, God help us. Uh, we found issues with movement. Mm -hmm. For example, the police security is increasingly um, tightening the movement uh, restrictions. And most of us actually had trouble uh, getting to office today. Mm -hmm. Yet, we, uh, of course, bosses, we, we had an issue of sorting out how we will be moving, that is distributing tickets. Mm -hmm. Ourselves in NMG, uh, we, we were unfortunately... A NMG being a national media group. A national media group. 
uh, a few tickets were given because we are a whole lot and uh, most of us, especially in the newsroom, found ourselves having to come to work, yet they restricted the numbers to 10%. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, a bit hard to enforce. Mm -hmm. So it was a little mm -hmm. bit hectic and uh, uh, try, I mean, hectic to trying to come to office, but we try to maneuver a few calls here and there and, and you make it. Also making it to some of these uh, uh, hospitals without the necessary protective gear becomes a little bit hard, especially uh, in in the in in the office. I mean, in hospitals and then the barrier places. So our media, found companies, our media companies are the employers providing this PPE for journalists, so you have to fend for yourself. No, I ha at least I haven't seen any at my place, and you know, uh, NMG is one of those companies that can can. Tries, yes. yeah, that tries to protect, but I think this is something that is expensive, and we are working in an economy that has been affected a lot by COVID. So you find some of these things uh, you can forego and ignore that particular reporting bit. What are you doing as journalists to protect yourselves? Because if you are in the front line, then that means you have to look after yourself before you can actually tell the story. You have to be alive to tell the story. Yes, we are following the SOPs, of course. Um, it's basically what we can do. And when they're sick, uh, no doubt you have to stay home. Mm -hmm. As long as you identify yourself, just inform your bosses. Stay at home to try and protect all the others. And the rest of us in office, I'm actually not masked because I'm alone in the office. I've been left here. I'm trying to, to finish up something. Otherwise, here it is cover up. No more visitors to the office because we, we believe there's nothing urgent that can't be uh, dealt with on phone. Mm -hmm. Just make a phone call, you will come to office when, when it's really urgent or after the situation is becoming or has normalized. Brilliant. Uh, now, Farida, just to the last question, while, while I still have you because you might run away and uh, uh, now that we have you, we might just as well use the chance. Uh, you, you had mentioned something on the money, money that is going to be given to the people. Uh, Richard in Tanzania, the Tanzanian in the Netherlands, was talking about uh, the fact that most of our people are sort of hand to mouth. So you really yeah. have to go out, do the job and be able to earn, earn a living. And the government has decided to help these people. What sort of criteria did they use? I had a very funny criteria that if any 500,000 shillings had, has ever gone through your mobile money account, then it means you, 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 you are not vulnerable. You're lucky enough this time. I'm yeah. trying to get you the, the list because mm -hmm. it is on my computer here. I try to, right. to go through them. Yeah. I hope I can find it. But... Mm -hmm. It's, it's it's funny it's a bit funny uh it is good it's a good initiative because most of the people really need it though i highly doubt it will be enough maybe i'm depending i'm basing on what i use at home but for them it could have come in handy but how they selected the people i don't know how they're going to get to those very people it's going to be very challenging on their side much as they are trying to help out it is going to be very challenging there are people you look at and uh you wonder how are they going to identify them? They mm -hmm. came up with categories, but we have people whose names, whose IDs, I mean, whose phone numbers are registered in some other people's names. Maybe, right. So we're going to end up sending money to the wrong people, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the categories are quite many. Uh, they're talking of giving only one person in a family, but how are you going to make sure this person is alone, I mean, it's not part of the other group that you're giving. Meaning there are people that are going to get money Maybe a lot twice. more and yeah. more eventually, yeah. Actually, like three, mm -hmm. you'll find three tax, taxi conductors or taxi drivers in one family. So those, that family is going to get like 30,000. I mean, <laughs> 300,000. And then the others, mm. you may find are going to be left out because probably they didn't use their ID to, to register their SIM cards. It's now, a bit given, given the corruption levels in Uganda, that means someone actually might be actually going to get big money, sending the you know registering numbers now and suddenly seeming vulnerable to receive the money. Uh, we 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 are waiting to see how they handle this one, but corruption has been uh, everywhere in most of these things, and most of the time when we we hardly get reports, final reports to 
show accountability, full accountability. But we are giving it a benefit of doubt to see how it goes. Finally, finally for me, Farida, it's just about, it, it, it's personal, it's just in terms of whether you have lost any close relatives because we were telling these stories of how you know people are coping with these situations. You suffered in the I, past, I, I, you I, recovered. I have, have you lost anyone close? I have been lucky. I personally haven't caught it this time, but my mom did, my sisters did, and their entire families actually. I haven't lost anybody very close to me, but I've lost friends. I, ha I have a friend who has lost four people in two weeks. They have buried four people in two weeks. And then somebody has just told me about a family that lost three, I mean, seven people in three days. Now that is terrible. Seven people in three days is quite a number. Now, when I hear such stories, I want to stay in my house with my daughters. But again, you can't because you have to work. You have to work. What are you doing then to protect the daughters? Sorry? What are you doing to protect the daughters? I make sure nobody comes home. I yeah. told them, at this moment, no visitors. Even if it's a friend and they ask me to come home, I'm like, can we please wait until the situation is normal? Don't trust me. I'm not going to trust you. And it's understandable. Thank you very much, Farida. I'm sure you, you, you were going to remain there and listen to some of the stories that we're going to hear. Yes, I am, as I, do, as I do my work. Thank you, Kasim, for Thank you very much. Me. Thank you, Farida, for making it in. Uh, Nora uh -huh. Narugo, Nora, sal Nora Salam Alaikum, welcome to the program. Wa Alaikum Salam wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Yes, we are talking about COVID. Welcome to Come, Let's Talk with me, Kasim Kaira. We are talking COVID. Have you had a personal story? Um, yeah, personally, um, I'm in the UK, but uh, I've gone through, I had a bit of challenge to work when I was pregnant in the first wave. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an option to stay at home because I tried to call doctors and staff and they say, if you don't have any uh, health condition, you still have to go to work. And I work in health sector, which is quite dangerous and uh, hard to deal with patients and it's quite hard to work when you're pregnant but talking about Africa is even more uh, worse because of uh, when I go on social media I've watched uh, such terrible news when you see uh, yesterday I saw a man with, with learning disability trying to take out all the perfumes on the a street and oh, yes, the yes, all the CBS clip. yes yeah the soldier were like take away the everything and it's like what am I gonna eat and he was crying and actually cried because it's quite hard to mm -hmm. say to tell them to stay at home when they don't have anything to eat it was quite touching and um I'm just hard doing for anyone who can help them because telling them to stay at home is not enough whoever who can support them. Um, it's good to sensitize them and say COVID kills, stay at home. But um, the man is uh, having a learning disability. He's got two kids. The, the lady just had a baby. They've got two kids already. And the ladies just had a baby. They don't have anything to eat. And you're telling them to stay at home. Nothing. Absolutely. Uh, Nora, I, 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 well, the, the dilemma then, especially for governments now, in a situation where you're getting so many people dying and so many people being careless the way our people are, lockdowns as a temporary measure really is sort of a, a run to situation where you are trying to control the numbers in terms of what happens. But I do acknowledge and take note of the, the, the point that you're raising as well. People who live their lives on a hand to mouth. Uh, to tell them to just get locked inside without a plan B actually makes life very difficult. But I'm happy to tell you that the person that you saw in the clip actually has ended up with so much stuff, so much stuff taken to him that uh, he might be opening a shop very soon because there's too much stuff. He can't consume it all and some of it will go by. So he's opened the local shop, no longer of perfumes, but rather of the sugar and uh, uh, wheat flour, everything that stuff that people have sent after watching that particular clip. And I think that's the power of social media. So what are you doing in your own way, Nora, to make sure that uh, you protect yourself against COVID? Because even in the UK, over the weekend, there were 18,000 cases, actually, which was the highest since 
<laughs> yeah, to be quite honest, I've been quite lucky because I worked in the first wave, but uh, during that time I was towards going to my maternity and I, I took a year off. So I've been uh, in my house with my kids only to get out to buy some food and take my child to school and coming back home. But I'm quite worried because my maternity is ending, but uh, the situation doesn't seem to get better. It might get worse in winter because they know my, the COVID-19 always comes down in summer. But if there are still many cases coming, I'm just thinking it might even get, get worse during winter again. Yeah. So that's what uh, a bit worrying. And um, I'm glad to hear that the man who was crying on the camera got really help because no, I, I got I have, really I have touched. The evidence, I have the evidence. I, have the I got really well. touched and uh, I was hoping how to help, but uh, there was no number and anything, so mm -hmm. I couldn't help. But I'm glad you got the help he needed. Thank you yeah. very much, Nora. Anyone who has just joined us, this is Come, Let's Talk with me, Kasim Kaira. We are talking COVID-19 and we are looking at the second wave and the impact it has had. Remember, if you are shy to speak on here, you can just type into the chat room or put your message on Facebook where we are live on 75W Radio, as well as on Uma Connects on Zoom and on YouTube uh, streaming live. The conversation is going on and would like to hear your personal stories. People who have lost relatives probably far away. I've seen people who are in Kampala uh, who have joined us, but let's hear about the situation probably in Germany at the moment. Muna Nambariwa, you are in Germany at the moment. I can see Chance Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. Remember, Haj Karim Kalisa is on, uh, is in the house. Haj Karim Kalisa is on. I, I've seen, I keep rolling and seeing everybody on there, but I've seen two hands, Chance K and then Abu Fatima. I'll come to you after getting to Germany. Nambariwa Muna, what's the situation in Germany at the moment? Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, in German, I, I, I should, should I say that it's one of it's one of the country that has had the longest lockdown from right. last year November yeah. till now they are just trying to loosen it a little bit mm -hmm. from last year November hmm. typical lockdown with the curfew right. with a strict and penaltable system right. But does, 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 the government, does, does the government provide help? Does the government provide help? Because in the Ugandan situation, people are saying they are getting locked down and there is no help yet from the government. You know, here the system of German is it's a social system whereby you are working or you are not working. Mm -hmm. You have every, every month to get the basic needs, everyone. That is the system here in German, which has helped them. But there are those people who have been working. If you are working, you don't get such allowances. And but they have been those helping who are working, those are they, are they essential workers? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But those who have been given a little bit of allowances, those who had their companies closed down because they were the ones taking care of themselves, not the government, they have been paid. But it is strict. We have to follow SOPs. You either stay at home or you go in the wilderness, but with a mask and tip, not closed mask. Mm. You have to use a systematic, or the whole system, we are using the same masks. Mm. Now, number I know you've lost relatives in Uganda. Is, is that so? In the second wave, you, you've lost? I tell you, in Uganda, it is a catastrophic. Last week, I lost three people, three uncles. This week, beginning yesterday, I lost an auntie. She was the director of Musanji. Mm -hmm. Musanji. Mm -hmm. she, she died of COVID, and all of them of COVID. But in Uganda, what I think is that many people have been always hearing this disinformation and has costed a lot of people. They get to listen to this information and misinformation. People mm -hmm. misleading them about COVID, but COVID is real. And people need to know that your life is more important than anything. Because even at work, you'll be able to work when you are healthy. If you are not healthy, you cannot work. I have lost five people 
in these two weeks and all of them lost the relatives. Three on my father's side, brothers, two on my mother's side. Wow. And that is how, how does it feel? How does it feel that you're unable even to attend their funerals, being this far away in Germany uh, when <laughs> they passed away in Uganda? Me as a, me as me, there is one thing I realized with life because I am a post-traumatic stress syndrome person. I once had a depression after my mother's death. That was 2009. I got to learn in life that the person you love most, if you lose someone you love, the best thing you can give to them, even if you have not buried them, is to pray for them every time you pray. After prayers, send greetings, send blessings to God so that they can share that. Or Pesadak. That is the way I've been conducting myself. Because even when I lost my sister, it was too much because I had just lost my mother in three months. Yeah. I couldn't hold it. I said I could pray to God. I told God, dear God, give me strength and make me strong so that I can for I, I can go through this situation because it's too hard for me. I can't stand it anytime I can pass out because my health, me also is not okay. But I try to go through by using that system. Always and prayer, and prayer pray being for the those fountain I love that have gone because there is nothing I can do. Mm. Pray for them every time. That is the greatest gift you can give someone who has passed on. Pray Thank for you them. very much. Thank you very much, Muna. I'm only leaving you because uh, to, so that I can allow more people to come into the conversation. It's okay. It's, Thank you so much. It has been very, a long time, but now no, that's, that's been you very, very that. nice to hear from you <laughs> and uh, keep safe. Uh, I can see Abu, Abu Fatima, please, if you can unmute yourself. I can see your hand up and I'll come to Chance K. Remember, you can just raise your hand. You can just do it the manual way if you can't click on the button. But normally there is a button there if you are on Zoom. I just click that button and put your hand up and I'll be able to see you and pick on you uh, to be able to speak. Abu Fatima, welcome to the conversation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your COVID story. Uh, my name is Jumba from Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, uh, Jumba, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajun. You are one of those that have lost many relatives uh, in a very short spell of time. So I, I can say that with authority. Sorry about your losses. Uh, How has it been for you? Or maybe I'm for our listeners, for our listeners and viewers, uh, who have you lost? Who, who have you lost? Am, am I allowed to use Luganda? Cause, oh, cause brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Well, Richard Sun will get lost in this, but, uh, and we have so many people from across the globe now, but uh, it's perfectly fine. If Luganda will will be able to deal with your situation, then fine. Um, I'll, I'll probably translate. Mobutu uh, experience your COVID as it's still going on. Uh Allah first of all when it had just started it's the Chinese virus. Mm. Uh, it came so true. I personally almost lost my life this year in February yeah. uh, with COVID. And it took me three weeks to get back to my feet. Mm. Uh, now it is hitting so bad in Uganda. One of America, there are a few restrictions and everything. Uh, we are okay and, and we are even going back to normal, I can say with authority, uh, mm. because uh, our governors in different states back it is around to now to move without masks. Yeah. So we, we move without masks, but because of the trauma mm. for the past year, uh, so we still put on our mask despite the first the fact that it was Kizokolachi to Kuzijako. So when you go back in Uganda. Um, two weeks ago, uh, a day after my birthday, my birthday was 9th of June. On the 10th, I lost my grandmother, uh, Jaja Hajat, um, Hajat Sentam. Hajat, due to COVID, 
um, Hakim Nafa four days later uh, in Nairobi na ye Hakim ye yaleta covid kati wa manya anti afunya covid abasoka ne baloza anti ba just chifu bana senyiga and he had allergies he had he was asthmatic mm-hmm. so mzee waleta covid yaka yali ya jaja ya mchalo nga ya mleto kubera na ya mlabirire kati buli wa badenga ko mawe waka he, he would hug his mom amwaka pe ko baka kiss mchenyi ne banyumya mu like mom and son kati watu ya musinga covid mm-hmm. so hakim bwa agenda to see his doctor for check up ah uh, ne bamugamba a uh, ina covid signs tetu gena kukiriza kudai waka atetula ba your oxygen levels are going down so they kept him at nakasero uh, for like five days and then he was rushed to nairobi hospital na bere nairobi hospital uh, galine kalisa his best friend uh, the brother the brother to karim um we are now na enga mujanja wa kompola mpola embera ne gana so hakim ali mu ventilators ali mu coma for four days So when he woke up yabuza Kalisa na mugamba this these are words from uh, Mr Kalisa on the on the barriers ya Gambia Hakim yazuka for days later na mubuza abeka na baleka yo sadda yo bali necho okuliya bali batia so doctor yali wao na gamba oh, we are sorry uh, hajat couldn't make it Hakim wao yamanyira nti mama we yafa no kumuzika ba muzika da so it's so depressing ndina abantu wafa ne baziki ba muzika etategerekeka baku chalo bebazi ka bantu abazika nga bapakasi yeah. uh, but alhamdulillah embera bwetu weri nti omuntu ogenda okola ku pepa wa kugenda okuzika omuntu ngoreda ate ba ambulance yeba ya ise wodda omuntu alo kumuzika yes, so hakim bwa manya nti hajati ba muzise uh, na afuna setback ya manyi ne bamuzaye ku ventilation watu nafa uh, on saturday night into sunday on the 20th of june Uh, that is like a week and two days later ngaba mazo kuzika hajati mm-hmm. hakim na bene nairobi ne bamukomya we uganda uh, friday night uh, into saturday morning 9 am ne bamtwale mbara ne bamuzika okutwala hakim okumuzika uh, bano bona menjogera ko uh, kasib sheikh obamanyi personally yeah these are um, personally yes yes yeah hakim baba bamazo muzika on sunday Uh, hajati nambo go nayenga ali bubinyo senga wafe oyo naye ne bamugama njate best friend of Hakim naye ba muzise anabera so depressed na afna set back at nayenga ina covid we oyo naye mungu na mutwala she was buried yesterday so as she was buried yesterday to badene senga wafe abadde na kaserao in coma hajat aida kati hajat aida naye ya laika ya mufuna kujaja mama wabwe ino bikuba we amanya anti hakimba mtute mdwa ile takomieo hajat aida went home okubatwa lile chokulia kati na yao alavika uyafunira covid mm. ne bamudusa na kasero but the truth about all these stories is nti abantu be uganda tebagala kogera mazima na kubulira abantu what is on the ground mm. uh, maybe journalists abali uganda mujja kutuya mbako hajati aida alavika yafa even before hakim died na ene batatu gamba ne bamu keepinga enaka serawo because for them they want these bills to shoot mwe bajje baba gamen jo muntu wa mwafude ngaba basaba sente zitategerekeka mama kasi mjumba will be delving that actually will be our next our next phase in this conversation especially those hospital bills and how hospitals have coped with the situation but go on so sh- sorry for the interruption yeah, sh- he might have died sh- before ya yeah, kakati omwana omwa mama ya mwana gwazala hajati ya gamba yakoma okulaba mama wenga amovinga when hakim was still even in nairobi kwa ya hakim yali ayogera ne uh, uh, mr kalisa aliwo he can confirm yelo yafa but oh no baga na abantu okudda yokusemberawo uh, until today we bagamye ya food day chokango liba muzise gulo kati lero bagambi a food day and to clear the body out they are asking for 109 millions ugandan shillings mm. million chikumi mumwenda so family eganye ebagambye kati bomba temwagala ogomulambo mugusigaze mamu manje muri gukolera we cannot pay that much money 109 million go muntu abadde mu dwaliro for one week mm. so these these are people we tubadde tuzika in a period of two to three days kakati before she is even buried walomalaga watu bikidemba a food day oyoye 
abadde ayangu wa kugenda kulaba bya kuzika bwe binabera at the like boyi afuna afuna accident yo naye afunde kati enje bagena kuzika emirambe ebiri choka ba kazika we tane ya covid that is seven last year we lost 14 people to covid in that same family mm. 14 people naye ekirala chenyizo gamba abantu tifena tugume a uh, chino bachiita mpawa atalika ababuli omajja ka ababuli omajja kulwaza abatalwadde tusaba Allah tukume abawona tusaba Allah tukumye abafiridwa na yena abantu bafe uh, abali ku social medias oba abawulirira ko banawe nga bafude mulekera wato kugena nga mu depressing abantu even the more obiko omuntu no gamba like for example i'll talk about myself obiki ro omuntu no mugama anti i've lost my dad and then somebody will start asking you yetata wako za liyadala ataka kati nga tuli la senta mu ategwe jumba eno mbogo eno nchima come on mm-hmm. when haji jumba died i was just like 13 or 12 years i've spent with hakim more years than the years i spent with my biological dad mm-hmm. ye yankuza ye yansomesa with all my other siblings ya tusomeseza ya tubere deo how could you send your tao tata wa siye tata wa chisegera kati ya biyatene biku wangira mu depression Another depression. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I think Kasim, that, that, that that's one area probably actually that I, I think we will need to have a conversation about. How do we as a community one deal with the, with, with the news once it gets to us? How do we help those who have found themselves in those difficult situations cope with the particular situations? I'll only leave you, Kasim, because other people try a conversation. Please stay on there, inshallah. I'll come back to you if we get a chance. But your story is actually very powerful. 14 people lost to COVID last year, uh, five people so far, with the sixth person now joining the fray, not of COVID, but from an accident. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy. Shekasim, uh, Shekasim, Akatalekeka, uh, Akatalekeka, uh, Kenja Gala, a journalist, but Yambeke Uganda. My young brother called the RRCC today in Nakasero asking him for papers to see if they can go for barriers tomorrow. Omwami mm-hmm. Amugambi. Echukuru na mwemu itiriza nyogendo kuzika. Mpapula katuweko nekubalala. Can you really say that? Mm. So katiteba genda kuzika because seba ina mpapula zi watu wala for movements. Nengo mwami ya wakambi. Mwena kaba we mpapula two days ago. Nekujaja wa mwena bawa. Nekudina bawa. But this is your office. Are you limited to how much people you are supposed to give papers to go for barriers? Binona vio bi depressing. No, I think that that's sure. definitely something. I mean, but the authorities are also in a very difficult dilemma because in a situation where the president has made it clear you are going to have a scientific funeral, 20 people maximum, how are you going to determine that you're actually giving the, 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 the papers to 20 people going out of And I think it, it's really one, one difficult dilemma, especially, Kasim, if you have been in, in, in a leadership position at this particular moment in time where you have to try to balance the family needs but also the government instructions, the directives. In comparison, actually, the health ministry guidelines, it is proving very difficult. As you have mentioned, there are many people who have been picked up COVID from going to the funerals. And, you know, the dilemma now is how do you balance? If you do, you are damned. If you don't, you are damned. And both ways, you are just in that difficult situation. I'm only going ahead just to allow more people to come into the conversation. Thank you very much, Kasim, and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to comfort you in what must be a very difficult time uh, that you're going through. Remember, this is Come um, Let's Talk with me, Kasim Kaira, live on 75W Radio, as well as uh, Umba Connect on YouTube and Zoom. Uh, Charles K. Uh, K-, 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 K. I have a question. Now? Yes, sir. These um, prices, these are um, the 109 million, the 125 million, that is, are these lies or... Oh, no, they're absolute, they're absolute, and actually that's oh. going to be our second uh, phase into the conversation. We just will more details because I've got some receipts as well. Yeah, and and I you might be able to share some of the receipts that, are, that, that, that I have uh, of people who have had 127 million, 95, 50 million. It's just nearly a normal thing now from the sound of it. Chance K, you have the mic, please. Go ahead. Yeah, assalamu alaikum, KK. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sir. Yeah, thanks for the the talk show. It's nice. Yeah, I've I've lost relatives. I have family members who are down, and uh, COVID is a game changer mm-hmm. to me. And Where are you? What at the moment? Where are you at the moment? 
I'm in Staines. Right. Yeah. That's in the United Kingdom. Yes, please. So you've got relatives who are down in Uganda, but back in Uganda. That's right. Yes. You, you might actually help us. In what situation are they uh, at the moment? Uh, you, you know, you know, COVID has, has been hyped so much that it has stigmatized most people that once you, it's like there is no any other disease, but it's only COVID. So this stigma is at a high level that if one gets to know, oh, I'm positive, he's like, I'm the next to die. So we personally, what we been doing is like to create like a family Zoom meeting mm. and we try to share the experience. How are you feeling? How are you getting on? What herbs, what medication are you trying to use? Just to, to, keep, to keep them engaged with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I've picked, uh, there are some few challenges mm -hmm. back home. One, I think the government was caught unaware about how serious COVID would be at this stage. Because one, where, where the spread is uncontrollable is the process of burial. When, you, for instance, if you have money and you want your, your loved one to be to be saved, you need to ferry her or him to Kampala. That's where the where, that's where the price of the best hospitals. Yes, we, we will yeah. Mm -hmm. But when when one dies, you have to ferry the dead body back to the village. Yeah, right. And within that process, there is a spread of COVID, which there's is contact. not noticed. Yeah, there is contact. Uh, is yeah, I'll give you a, I'll give you a scenario whereby okay, you get. Uh, you get a funeral service and these guys are said to have PPIs, mm. but it's a scorching sun, let's say from Kampala to maybe Hoima. Yeah, it's a one and a, one and a half hour drive. And this man is covered within that PPI. And on his way down there, either he's going to stop on a petrol station or on a shop to buy something and in one way or the other, he's going to spread it to some people around the road. Right. And that has been a, a, a negative to say mm -hmm. to the government. What I would, what I would have suggest, suggested is that at least if we had zoned down barrier places, I know it's very harsh, mm -hmm. but if we have to save lives, I think the rate at which people are dying and the rate at which they are being transported to burial places, there is a big weakness. We are not doing anything. We are not solving life. Right. Yeah. Then uh, mm. another 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 weakness which I picked was there is a lot of uh, you know when you're desperate when you're down, you have a lot of people telling you try A, B, C, D, try this, try this. So people's body are intoxicated with a lot of herbs. No, actually, that, 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 that is a big thing in Uganda now. There are particular herbs you won't be able to find on the road because they've suddenly become, you know, the, the, the James at, at this particular moment in time. Uh, James Mwesigo, I've seen your hand up. I'll come to you as soon as uh, we are finished with uh, Gaddafi Mayanja and... Um, and um, I'm the first one speaking at this moment. Yes, are, are you done? Yeah, so, so what, going forward, I would suggest that uh, we all have members back home. The challenge is the, the, time, the timing of knowing that I have COVID mm. and uh, the time it takes for you to go to hospital mm -hmm. is very cr critical. So if you can and send any testing kit or mask to your loved ones, it will save life for people back home. No, thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. I'm just reminding you, please, you can text us into the chat room and we can pick up the messages in case you can't get on. Uh, but for those who are on, thank you very much. Gaddafi Mayanja, uh, you are on, you have the mic. If you can unmute yourself, please. 
Gaddafi Mayanja. And I'll need to get some ladies now because it looks like now it's back to the men. We've got lots of the men uh, having a conversation. And this is really very interesting because I think for those who have just joined us, a few issues are coming up, the kind of recklessness or carelessness that is happening in Uganda. People failing to acknowledge uh, that, the, you know, that COVID is real. People rushing to go to visit people who are already infected with the virus and then transmitting or transferring this particular virus and spreading it across. We are hearing even a new phenomenon where people are being transported from villages to the city centers, Kampala mainly, where they go to seek treatment. And there along the way, uh, even the people who are carrying the bodies, even of the deceased, along the way stop to go to a shop to buy something in case they are infected. Then that is also transmitted. All these are all things that are coming up. In the next session, I think we'll be talking about more the cost, the deal, the experience in the hospital has seen as a very, very, you know, big thing coming in. And Mayanja, I was waiting to hear from you, but you've suddenly gone quiet. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nice to hear from you. Thanks for joining. Come, let's talk with Kasim Kaira live here on 75 Derby Radio and on Uma Connect on Zoom and YouTube. You are COVID. Monashe <laughs> Nature and Luca Mabilizi lawyer. Dajago, Dajagi, Naiti, Yasoka Nafa Kusandi, Dajagi Shamsa Nafa Kuroks at two. I take Dajia, Dajane Nafa Kusata day. Surprisingly, Dajia, Temani Conti, Tetegan to Arabi Bafa. It's a, it has been so traumatic to the extent in the October June we are trying to do the COVID that is when I think COVID led them to picking a Uganda. Yeah, it was end of May. The, yeah, yeah. On the day, I want to be money. I close to me. I want to be busy every day. What they were for, at least on average, every day to people. Now, yeah, I want to be far away. We don't know what to say. Kubanga, circumstances are really very, very tough back home. It's really hard. Now, we have to be careful. Kubanga, we want to see that. My brother, the moment of COVID, is political. We have to show that. Because we, we visit them second day of November. Ah, we jagenda. Send you go na jagenda. Send you go. Ya tani kanga send you go. Ate problem we have, they have no kunde okusemero. Kwa wechari wano, mudi kila mbuni ni second wave wano. Mano ni hapa, hapa ni hapa ta, ni hapa kama wadeyo awaka. Kwa wanga, ni hapa tu mani, hapa ni wakula masomera angu. Kwa wanga muno, hapa na baru wala angi, mifuba, ni hapa ni wakula chi. Kwa wanga, ah, mbawe ni, mbawe ni. Kwa wanga, 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 mbawe ni, mbawe ni. Tivakoze. Kati awazadi wadema ukolo busenti wa mama zoe kuboe watu wiki mu awana wakolechi adeyo. So awana wakomwa waka. Kati awana hawa mama zoe kuleta ubora dewa ubaka de. Kati yomka de na yeye mwenye mzuri. Kati kusaza zaidi chini miguu ana gadafi ya masomo romani. Instead, actually bogeendo kura. But abasome sa ne especially head teachers abawa masomo. Wafu dinyo in this second wave, but the numbers are coming in and simply because. Whenever the children would, would catch COVID, it's sick bay in a school does not have the capacity yeah. to be able to handle such cases. Exactly. I know three parents, three parents who have been talking about their children, they had been treated for COVID from school, and the parents were never informed about the illness of their children. But one of them died, and she was a 13 year old, you know, with, with, with a case like that. Now, mm. these are cases that whenever you hear, many of the schools were under a lot of pressure. They take so many loans from the banks. 
they can get students back and get some money rolling. For them to now report that they had such cases, it was difficult. Here the mass, I just wanted to highlight a little bit of that. quick gamba, Okay, <laughs> Means come with that for what? Can it be very expensive and everything? Ne? Muso kemo tunu ile abantu we muso kemo jamu sente. We no ga muno kati. Oba tena ku kureta mura dewo. So ko te komi yoni komi za deposit. Kakati, what are you depositing? Really, government I don't know back to the ndako ezo na forum ya jendi jendi na forum jendi kaya fe. Kusira bila fe bia 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 masomero. I was telling one of the boys, Nemugamanti, Olimu, Mavi, Olimu Nene. Who was a watch? Nagamba, a government equality, the triangle, the triangle level best. But to me, Lora, I afraid about the Gamba, the Gao. Bagger, I call him Tolokum. Yes, Tolokumi. It is better than nothing. Now to get a ball on the Batia. Mugena kwa nabati ya bani. Ate anya gawi ya munu kwa uge ndo kuwa ya singa. Kwa nga bade mpu ila uku barometer before I came here. Wano minisa, minisa mchale ndi nize. Mwuga munu awatu. How are going to pick this one? Tuge na gena mbibu gevi nene. Which means the mutu wa wansi ya jana kasinde. Aliyeli. Mkumilo whatever. Mbiyarevi ya wansi. Yata gena kufuna. Wana wali. Awani mbuga wakai wa gena kukula chi. Kufuna. Wow. Yeah. Kwa Ate muna wina ko, muna kwa ati mobile man, shibi itake mtuwa la atano, toki na kufuna sendi. Mbaba wanga mzimbi nge sendi wazi isi za kwa sasurava kwa zi, oirayaba haka gende. Awende. Atati olu. Kwele kele za just to allow more people to come into the conversation. Insha Allah. Insha Allah. Insha Allah. Very, very pertinent issues and uh, thank you very, very much. James Meshugwa, Sebo Dwa Kushembe Rugwa, please unmute yourself. Hello James. Sebo Muzu. So Muzukuru Wakaida, Zenusa Jamuganda, a West Bogastan, the name to Ariaba, would there as young and the way Muguru Sebu. So Nimusa Yedirendiga, the Muzukuru Romwa, Yaman Yazeb Bossa, Yamwesigua, but take a couple of taste square and Musa Jamwesigua. I mean, experience a fum, a te a fumbe waka. Yes, sir. Nobody was a good one. No, rich or no co. I mean, a civil body by Senga Wange Covid. That's Experience yangu yaba dembi nyo muzika. Yaje nyagala. Kushia nyinga na fewa. Notu yunzo ojitele zaamu. Mm. Nti. Senga wange yaba deha jati. Uh, Yaba tuwa de wali ni tane simuwa kolachi. Uh, Nitusuwi ya nti. Nti hajati. Ajakule te wamu ngeri ili mwetitivwa. Na ye, our funeral services, eh? Engeji wa mule semu. Manyinti wa denkule vila ya chisiramu. Maiti wa jiteka kakatanda waka ita nisanda. Jeneza. Na ye, wazi wa mule engeza. Nga ulave vigele. Kwa gambe pozi, eh? Ukumutu walawali kuuntana. Bawamu jemu moto kabamu tutebu tuwasi wali kuchi. Kuuntana. Kuuntana. Mm. Champi siza wubi nyecho. Na hati techandi ntu siza wala. Na ye. Wabaji siwa mutambu za wubutu walawali kuuntana muzika. 
wabadde wo ajjago bire mabiganga jafu yira ne bombe ne fuire bimera ngajafu wa wofu 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 eh it is infectant yes when you zuk chite cha badem ochibanga chi katigaba ne na janga afu ne yizi chemanyi sanya so wa muwe bungereza agamatine might this chassis gaba to the chassis gaba and to Buradi, or to about food day. That's what to answer meeting a Buradi, Kuban to Varala, Wanga Batasa, Abata Colora, or Mutaba Gains. The ye engage the Balisam Yadiantis and no Bamba de Bipundi Fenani but to Fuida, with Thomas Okusika Fenani but young but to Fuida commute way, but Fuida won't you name a Bamba but the Mammy Rundi Satu. Tato, <laughs> Mwami 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 Bosa, but they have uh, 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 attended nearly four or five funerals as well to COVID. Remember day Uganda, I've just come back in the Munaku Wangar Wamunana, that you were self isolation. Um, a team of between Arabia, which I agree with really, Yembera, first of all, COVID has deprived us of our own dignity. I think what COVID has done to depriving uh, our dignity as a person. The second thing, but our funeral directors, our funeral services, they are all in it for business. Our singer, they are coming in, they are going to attend. Sometimes they are attending two, sometimes three funerals, especially the one who is in the country, the one who is in the more bodies they attend to, of course, allowances that must be according to the distance they are traveling, uh, but also more according to how many bodies they can put in. So part of the pressure is, bagi ane bari to muntu wo, ne ba mukwata mu gele tali mu chiti ba kubanga juki ne bari kusente bari kusawa bagi zaku kwa jibawa ni zaba deyo to the next person to pick up. O maiti ne bari data. There has not been any preparations as according to our government. For example, we're taking measurements. But we have again the cementana. Come on now, you get the cementana and get standard. You are just being a standard cementana. Ngata ba tu ba njau. Njau kujomba sa juu sa eka yira we endi. Ombiri guanga. Alhamdulillah, mungu ya gumpa. Ruto ruina angu jero. Ni mene kofa mwatu wami visigara di chasi gati. Oja geno tuka. I've witnessed a situation where bare to mufu. And the person could not be to that space because they had not done any preparations prior. They had not measured. body bag They are trying to squeeze almost the, 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 We handle them as a fragile, you know, element as a as a fragile uh, component that we end up bazika. Part of the process in ways of what we see when we to get to Kumusa is that process of how you handle the person from the washing to the carrying to the praying to the setting down when we get to Kumusa. You look at that process and it's actually you know very very painful. We want to offer me the way I take a new chair, but you go in take a new one. Covid has deprived us of that. You can no longer touch body. We want to get to get a get to go again to get to. Ogendo kula ya misile jewa kwa zisa mkwazi sa wali. Enzi kaya kwa espesha mba sirama. Eba debe ilamu. Okubanti mtuina ni suka jemika wa guru wa. Muge kwa a kind of respect that goes for the body. Now that has all been taken away. Wanga fuida fuidore ya zemu na yo. That will have its particular questions actually. Scientific ya tuja kutani kukubanga tuge nda. Questioning. So. Even the go get away that when I got to UK, somebody is saying Sue, I think he's saying in the UK the body is in the coffin, perfectly fine. And the coffin is because in the areas actually they are trying to avoid one infection, but also two, in some of the areas that we lay our people to rest are areas that are very wet. They are wetlands and therefore must be absorbed in the go on a body and all of that is easy. Therefore, we're going to take them. Still, 
that does not take away the kind of respect because that's why it's called paying our final respects to the person. So you are carrying the body and the way you, you, you do that is you are taking the body, you are carrying somebody's person, taking them there. Mr. I can actually feel, you know, your, your, your particular pain because I've witnessed this in particular. No, this shouldn't happen. At least some advanced party should be. You know, they, they make these provisions. It's failing. So I, I can actually do it very well. That, knows, uh, that is definitely something that now we are going to raise. Uh, Farid and is here. Uh, there are actually one of the bigger conversations that are taking place in Uganda. These are things that I think that go into the need to go into the public domain about what you're discussing about Kulave and Zika to Zika with respect. Being a COVID uh, patient or the COVID victim does not deprive the person of the last respects that they ought to have. We were in Mr. Mwami Bosa. No, sometimes I think they are overdoing it. They have the capability, the capacity to do stuff that are sort of rules. Omutogana, Yakat sanitizer, Mungu, a trim quesi, Gamunga, or Mungu, a single. Several questions we just saw over this. Are you afraid of my way? I'm afraid of my way. I'm afraid of my way. I'm afraid of my way. Farid Amaweje, you are listening in. Uh, the Te Jamila Jamila. In that case, if Farid Amaweje, I try to get... Oh, Chowila, Bila Karim Kalisa, Shehaj Karim Kalisa, Sebu. Achari, yo. Ingeda kumule, tambu wangu nyo. Uh, jamila, Jamila, bae cha ageza wa kubaransi, ngafunde kumarumozi ya machara, dami yo hajati nuru. Salamu alikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Oh, wa alikum salamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. 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 Bar um, well, um, city Uganda at the moment, Naye uh, from Bien Purida, Eliaban to um, like yesterday, my uncle visited Mulago, mm. Nagambanti. In terms of Abantu, Abajanja, Babantu, I think at Nuzabaf Nemo, Bablo, Kakati, mm. people Bagula, Madagala, but Babatu Kang, Abajanja, Bibabao, Gata Madagala, Gutibagawa Bant. So mm. it's quite worrying. Nay, I've got my auntie right now, a liquid oxygen. So, um, eh. how is that costing? Is, is, is it cost effective? Um, I'm not Okay, Barak and Malfiku. Haji Karim Kalisa Semuga went to Karika and the mother of orphans because I'm sure, uh, considering Nain Tambra Jova do Tambria Jo Tambri, mother of orphan, I worry about you. Uh, welcome to the conversation. Umul Aitam. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, experience of what you have dated you over day, you are COVID. Uh, uh, Trayans is a program, you know, na experience in the Nene Genina up to now. Need depressed a bit. One, for mama of a COVID, I'm I'm sorry, I will not mention the hospitals. Yeah, that's We went with one million in cash. We went with one million in cash. We went with one million in cash. Nazidi worth one million. Ne tutuka twagen am dread sa kumi name. Ne tutuka mami wa fasabubi. Aina pressure, aina scari, na kolola na nyo. 
Netu wabe la mudua lile elio. Tuwabe la mudua lile elio. Oh, sorry. Tuwabe la mudua lile elio. Up to sawa nga tano. Bakula testi eno, bakula testi elini, bakula eli. After some time. Doctor ni batu gama. Katu mama wa mwetu gena mwa isolating. Netuwa gamba it is fine. Watu waka chwe mwino kola mwino depositing ayo mtuwala atano. Tuwa gamba it's fine. Netugena tu depositing. Juhu kila mami wafalimu condition imbi. Room weba mutade baleta waba rade. Walo ne doctor ya jana gamba umurado umulalanti. O ina COVID. Nga walo na haba rade. Haba ntumu nane bati haba lu waba rade. Nemputa doctor ni munga doctor. Esho ngati wandi choge de maso gaba rade. Nga ndaba walu waba hii. Era fe mami wa fe na vane mu kasenga kuna ngamba ah ze muntu ali wali mu tent wemba ntula mpaka weba mpe kitanda ne tuguma mama na abera mu mpeo sawa tano wetu wagendo sasura sente as a admission um, ne batu gama ntino nga kasha tuwede ko kwa 1 million rede yali ewedeo nga bagala ne tuwagala twina visa ne mobile money nenge dua lile lote lina service za visa na mobile money Yetu waga, what can we do? Ombubuka at pharmacist. Na atu gama, mgene marua lira amalala, mgene marua lira amalala. Ne mgamba, what? Tuliba siram, muliba siram. Tu depositing za one million. Mutu manyi, kupapa aliba tu manyi. Ne, mituwala atano. Mweke njini temuina visa. Temuina mobile money. Tuwa sabi namba kituke kwa senti. Muga, nja tuina cash. Tetune suwa kujia senti. Tuwa ze saa kuminem. Tulimu saa watano. Neba tu brastinga bubi. Era na fetuwa njiga. Nituma nitufuga motuka nituva. Nitujia o mama. Nenga tetuma ina chidako. Nenga deduwa ule detuwa itu ya suguri lako. The next day nituge na marua lira amalala. One hospital. Neba tu gama. Mama. Neba tu wariza wa sumaga mami ya ina COVID. Neba tu gama tu depositinge five millions. Netu depositinga cash three millions. Then netu sasura ne by visa. Two millions. Tu batu mazo kusasura. Neba tu gama. Ate space is where they were. Ate tukena bate keri kudua lide dala. Subhanallah. Ambulance bagale mituwala asatu. Jamu atuse. Mama feta ino kusijeni alimu 80. Netufuga. Netukena kudua lide dala. Nganalio lidi full. Katiba netuwa saba. Netuwa gawa kati. Wewaba temu ina space. But who design no saint. Nibagama bagenda linda accountant. At the end of the month. Wagendo to design saint. Subhanallah. Nenga mami alimu mbela ambi. Neba tu dizake za cash, that is three millions, two millions. Bazi tuwa after. Dozo mwezi kuwa bade gumaze na kuita u. Nga mamazo bale bita bubi. Nga tubi ya sibia na kwande, we are so arrogant. Netu guminki diza. Netu tuwa tambula ndo za marua li ronga five hospitals. Nga luamba tu gamba wajudete wali oxygen. Aonga COVID ya katame nyo. One of the hospitals, nga diku Enteme Road, netu mutu usa. Na one batu gamba five millions deposit. We had to deposit five millions. Neba kuwata mami wafe, neba mtuwala mwa isolation munda. Waguru. Na yeche unisa, mami weba mtuwala mroom. Netuba gamba, fetu saba. Nze nje kwe sabika, mungeri yona. Nisaba mbele ni mama angi. Kuma mrade wa COVID, haba afiringe nyonta. Every time. Every time haba ulire nyonta. Haba singa. Haba ya galo kunywa. Katuwe kanganti na abantu wa mba mteka kwa oxygen Na ya galo kunywa Tala ba musawu Tala muntu wani agenu muwa amazi Tala muntu agenu muwa kukua kunywa Tala ba Wea ba inti Eitho wa ba andi training ze yoku ba janja biyomu Oba Minu nzizi neta nze tu saswa Nwa ba o special nurse Ngatafa murumu ya muradoyo Mwa ba mwa isolating inde Kwa za ba mba ambi Mi I think ita ba mwa rusiba inza nukufa Ore mbera jiba itamu Na hitu watu ukeyo, in fact, time, vya tu iti di ya kuku watu watambula marwari do. Nituwe tama, nituka haba. I had to call, buli ofa ni jiyo na jie mmanyi. Buli buntu ye nagwe mmanyi. Nibaga, please, mutuwe kudua. Mama afa, gena ne oxygen ya abuze. Ne, Allah ya tukole la, eche nja uro, che tutamanyi. Because I believe it was zari duwa zaba. Because we tuwa tu kakwe le dwa yonye kwa ambila Entebbe Road, ne tu depositinga 5 millions, they isolated our mom oxygen ya se. Na ye, doktor ya tuwa amba, oxygen wa manu wa mingate tulaba, ali fine. Ne tu mga ate chisoboka. Budi dwa yonye da jetulaga batu goba. 
kaga tiba ina oxygen. Mami wa fena siba yu full day. Full day in the evening. Kuba mami ya tu kwa ni matamu sako na oxygen. Fetuwa saba. I, I, I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya tu ya ambila mudu wa zabandu. Na ye, webali wa tusubia doktor ya tu kama, ok katu monitoring till, till nini, full day katu monitoring it. Kwa monitoring a mami, in the evening ni batu sibula. Wallahi batu dize mitualo mkaga. Ye refund kwa batu. Wane mbuza doktor, hii doktor. Cheche mtu bili inga. Kwa mami, tiba mta deko oksijeni. One. Mumu wade makere nda gaga nunga manji ni inga sumago na. Ne mga mbachi. Omzao ya mpita na nga mba shania. Singa tabade mami wo. Wandi wa doji ya mduwa lirolino. Ntineda. Na ngamba so, if we tuba tuwe wadeo ni tuja tujanja baba and tuba mwe. Then, tuba tuino sasura basa wala wensi tuina. There's a reason zize ya ampa. Ne mungu za kwesho ni mga doktor. Omu mtu wata ina sente. Omu mtu umu naku. So, he's going to die. Well, she's going to die. Because the five million that we deposited, tetu zifunye. Otu diza ke mtu wa reju. Kaga. So, abantu wabata ina sente bagenda kola batia. Kola batia. I think umul aitamu wano nilfa feels you again. This is very sad. Especially being a medical personnel and hearing fellow colleagues working like this. It's so sad. The medical team in Uganda has no ethics at all. Kakati kumbere no mama ariatia alimumbere ati. Alhamdulillah, for us for, to be living and to be able to live with her, because we took her home, we took her home, and we said, we took her home, and we said, we took her home, and we took her home, and we said, we took her home, and we said, we took her home, and we said, we took her home, up to now, she's fine. Allah. Experience in that. But to have no fear, because to have no mommy, we have no fear, to have that love of your mom, we took her home, and we said, we took her home. I had to call one doctor. Wam lab. Najia wane wange. Nina waban to a love in the house. My kids and the orphans. Wallahi ya tuke beda fe nana tu gamba tu ina COVID. To a love people in the house. Na tu jako sente buli mwana naba naba to have three, five years, six years. So namu nyumba na tu gamba tu ina COVID. Do you know what it means? Nenge namu depression, nenf na fear. Understand them. So we move Subhana wa Taala and teach single kubera urunji, and we just pray that we actually overcome this situation. Hope you actually get over this umulai term. Haji Karim Kalisa, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for this important program. Sina kula wakubu na vitaye. Thank you for this important program. Amin. Era wanzi luka konga tetura baganye COVID COVID made it very very difficult to sort of roam around. I was hoping that I would see you. Now, what is media being in the mainstream media? First of all, yeah, we missed you. I don't know whether I'm a bit clear. I'm very far. I'm when they hide. Oh, yeah. No, but I can see you. I'm a big country. Yeah. Is the network? No, we can, we can see you. The network is slow, but I, I can hear you, alhamdulillah. Probably if you keep in one place, we might be able to hear you but much better. I can see you in Yeah, the... thank you very much. And uh, very good. So, uh, I was saying that I'm a bit far, mm -hmm. uh, very far. Uh, are you in Guru? I think uh, my Sheikh. Uh, are you in Guru uh, or in South Africa? Uh, we we'll know the place. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm in Ruhamba. Hey, you're in Ruhamba. Ah, Ruhamba is lit like that. There, there is electricity what is like that. <laughs> <laughs> The network might might yeah. play up a little bit. Of Mahbuba, no. Sheikh Mahbuba, Muzar, but that's where I am. Now, uh, over oh, the thickness of the COVID, COVID, COVID pandemic, uh, this second wave especially. 
uh, every uh, what, what has so, it been like for you online mm-hmm. as you know what uh, so, your network your network is playing up i, I can Ajgaris, network yo brida elim kora koi koi. It's breaking up. You are breaking up. Okay. Uh, okay. Can you try and switch off the video? If you can switch off the video, maybe between zombie here. Jako video kubanga na yeye na wewe na. Maybe if you can turn off the video, because mm. the network is playing up now. I turn off. Yes, if you can turn off the video, probably you might get better quality. So yeah, it let's, is let's yeah now. Yeah. Let's try with it. Yeah, that's that's my right. But then, Buza, your particular experience now with the with the COVID, especially the second wave, how has it been? Hello. Uh, is the network? Yeah, the network is seems to be struggling a lot. I mean, we can hardly hear you. Could you try and move to a, to a slightly different location while I get uh, Frances here uh, on the line? Please try, try and try and move slightly, maybe your location during the moment here in Zimbabwe. Frances, Could you are live. In a different Hi, Frances. Hello. Hello, welcome to the conversation. I'm just waiting for Haji Karisa to get into a better location, so maybe we can be hearing uh, from you. Welcome to come. Let's talk with me, Kasim Kaira, uh, here live on 75W Radio and on Uma Connect. Uh, what has been your experience with COVID? Where are you? Maybe that's, that should be the starting point. Presently in the UK. Right. Um, um, my dad, Mm-hmm. Yali Belgium now for COVID. Oh. I have had some relatives in Uganda about for the COVID, and I'm comparing both experiences. Right. Um, Kwegamba trauma jetuita mu na abantu ba fe abali in Uganda. Well, to say this, uh, my profession in the council, Ebongeleza, in the council in Uganda, kola mu two jurisdictions. All right. Um. <laughs> Na ye nze manye ntinama teka ge Uganda, but tuina chiba ita professional ethics. Ebi ntu ebi affecting a Uganda, mazima wolava situations abantu bafimu bafira, clinical negligence e yitiri de. I just can't understand Raji Dara, you know, this issue teli kwagamba teli no maji regulating, everybody has simply kept quiet about it. Um, you know, the, I invoke even the, the Uganda Law Society. Eh? This is a human rights issue. But while a petition you know, to see that the health system is regulated, Abantu Bafibagenda Marali Reka Uganda, Abantu Bafila Yo, for example, total negligence to have lost another auntie yesterday. Um, Chair Rosemary Vyarugaba, yeah, for the COVID, it is total negligence. Baba Jaco centers on Yinji Nyo, mu hospital. I want to mention the hospital. Nayenga Nemo oxygen in Musilin, that Tamuli, Mu, you know, Teba, Kogam Baba Jaco, Edi Dralio, Bajako Oxide, Baba Jaco Center, Musa Sudechi, no Musa Sudechi, Nayenga, the services are not there. Adaba radi ne baba kwa tila yo, ne baba gana chiboba mumujewo, mumutwale somewhere else, they will not allow that. Now Honestly, Francis, uh, Francis, what Francis, is going you, on? Francis, you, you, you do practice in both jurisdictions. I do, yes. Why don't we come up with a test case? Why why hasn't anyone thought about the, the likelihood of coming up with a test case? Again, they come courts and we take these people to, to court. Because I think something similar was raised and the permanent secretary of the Minister of Health, Dr. Diana Atwini, was saying the laws in Uganda are archaic laws. They are colonial laws to the point that now these hospitals can actually get away with murder just in terms of you know, what is happening, especially when it comes to the pricing policies that are taking place at the moment. Since you are a council and since a program like this is one program that actually can make a difference uh, in terms of getting a conversation going, why don't you come up probably as councils 
and suggest a test case that might come. A, a person like Mabidizi has been very good in taking up trial cases. Uh, this might be one that probably you could take up. Have you thought about the, the, the possibility? No, the, the, the situation is, Mabidizi situation is like ye yabelanga bolaba applicant. For mm -hmm. counsel, I have to get a client who can who can say, can you represent me in this case? I'm not the applicant myself in the matter. It is a case whereby they get themselves together, then they instruct. Instructing yeah, but Francis, uh, counsel, counsel, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, given what you have seen, given the particular cases that you are hearing, there is a possibility that you could advise. It's not like you are trying to instigate people to do that because most people do not even know that they can actually do that. That is one. Two, by that Oktia, even the prohibitive costs of getting a counsel, a lawyer to, to be able to take on a case. Because of all those difficulties, do you think as a counsel, probably you might provide, you know, like pro bono services, at least for a test case, so that this can be put to the test in the court of law. Absolutely. I'm happy to take it on because one is too much. I am absolutely happy to take on any cases as it is into this situation. Not that this is, I know about Tevaina Center, but this is something really which we have to address. Unless we I don't think a interview in Uganda at the moment. The ventilators, the video, it is a pure, total negligence. More oxygen, more oxygen, at a time. I a night shift. No one is challenging them. No one is challenging them. You know. So personally, yes, I take on the challenge. You know, if the cases are going to have an etaga, inbox me, I'm more than happy to take on this these cases to pioneer it because it is too much. Too free yeah. Yeah. Too Francis, too that is fantastic. Great. Actually, if you could help us yes. probably off the back of this, no take on your contacts in the chat room there, please, if you don't mind, even if it's an email, maybe we can take it from here because that's where conversations now actually take us. Uh so Francis, experience you want to be now, clinical negligence, you say. Is there something that can be done about it outside? Well, I'm right now, go now, right now, the hospitals, the health system has been stretched beyond its capacity, its limits. People are struggling. Health workers are actually exposing themselves into dangers. Well, I've seen health workers who come to deal with COVID patients in a private hospital. Whatever they have not even worn the PPE that is necessary to protect themselves. There is negligence on their part, leave alone the, the negligence on patients. I've seen serious negligence, or even especially what Janga Mutu was sent. I don't want to go to what I am, but a PPE, a Jakura, and a Jakura become master of and they decide to loosen up, to slacken on a situation where their health is actually at risk. Do you think then there's maybe it's more to this than just the clinical negligence or the part of the patient? It is everything. There is no standardization of anything of the health service. You know, I'm not saying I expect clinics as a as in developing countries or covenant zidiku same level nga the the ngabola bantino or is a is it more developed countries so i'm trying to put on the light however now you know what i expect into professional ethics did it standardized is the clinic season is in Jakarta to five millions. Honestly, that's enough money to buy even the PPEs. Why are they not there? Why are things there? Is, it's like you cannot, you cannot expect abasawabo or kubanga ba providing a good quality service when they also themselves nabote baba fako the whole thing and it is not being challenged i remember also when my uh, my mom fell ill nengezako kubaga baba nangi have you done this mukoze covid test mukoze this mukoze wherever omusawo mulala nanga but tamu nange to complaining abo no complaining abasawo mbo bajja kugana mama wote bajja kumufa they used to that as a threat against me you know so the whole point why even my mom made it kubanga na yeye alwala covid na yeye naona bi ali mudwali de bi edie mukono na na bagament should anything happen about my mom i'm suing the whole hospital 
to well, I mean, it's like menacing them difficult to or whatever number why is this being allowed it is like the medical uh professional ethics say yeah uganda uh, today no, no one is challenging them, but your master did several CDC about to a seven nine give a You know, I think it is high time, you know, um, everybody or coaching to a kucheni giramu, abananga by no complaints, titamuzuko langazili anonymous. And I know some people are scared for their lives, are scared for bananga to be not dioc to allow muntu umuntu wange, nebaga no kumufako. Naye remember, elomu to a jakmu toala, omulala, edana eva mise muecho. Era to day of square one. Even to every single band to Okuta, band to Uganda, it's not only to worry your ventilators, but the basic issues are not being addressed, and that needs to stop. You know, Kumanga, if that same situation was happen is to happen in a developed country over here, Nebaulinant, that has happened. It will hit. It will be addressed if it is something which is in the UK. I'm giving an example. Nenga right to fetch so bola chikola. It's just because bano ababa leaders abali mugundi they are not challenged. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Frances. And I, I'm sure please put if you can put your contacts in the in the chat room. We'll pick the conversation here. I think we are actually going to take it uh, up and try to see if we can have even a test case. Farida Kaziwe Wariwa no and uh, well from the Ugandan side, uh, Haji Karim Karisa is back. Let's bring a medical professional here who is practicing in the UK. Having listened to all of this, I'm sure she's busting at the seams. Uh, Neil Fakasuja, if you can please unmute yourself. Uh, just to take this conversation while I'm getting ready to bring in Haji Karim Karisa. Neil you are live on 75W Radio and on Uma Connects. Come, let's talk with Kasim Kaira. You've been listening to this conversation. You're hearing all the, 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 the sadness, the pain that is coming from the people that you've listened to. What's your take? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All I can say, I am very disappointed. And there are times you actually say, why don't I get on that flight and go and do and make a change in my country? But I've always wanted this, but I know I'll always be frustrated. It is so sad. Like uh, Mrs. Dung, Miss Dungu has been has been on and said, and I've always said it, that they are doctors in Uganda no longer have any ethics at all. God knows what kind of work they're doing. I really don't know because you take an oath. And not only that, when you go into our field, a medical field, you really have to have some kind of empathy. You have to put yourself in the situation that, listen, this is my mom. If this was my dad, if this was someone I really love, okay? But when you actually look at it, people think, I was saying that people think COVID needs a lot of, it's a lot of money. No, actually, the treatment of COVID doesn't, is not that expensive. It's until someone actually needs to go into intensive care. But we need something like health promotion, which is not even existing in Uganda. Yes, we know we have a problem. I even say that COVID is not going to, it won't, it's not going today. It's not going to go today. But what are we going to do? But it's so frustrating, so frustrating. I have a case, I've lost, yes, like Zaidi told you, we've lost family members, but I was so gobsmacked, I'm sorry to say this. Someone sent me a, a sort of like a picture of a doctor, well-known doctor in Uganda. This person actually said, oh, my mom, my wife has been diagnosed with COVID. This doctor, well-known, if there was any medical person here would be shocked. Send him a picture that go and get tramadol IV. <laughs> yeah. Nilfa, we've lost you. Hello, Nilfa, are you there? Doctors are not, I don't know, doctors are not even well informed. They're not up to date. COVID, we're having so many studies of COVID going on every month. Medication is coming out. Trials, we are trying, even us, there is no cure for COVID. We always tell people, there is no cure for COVID. But people are so scared. Unfortunately, I want to again that banding, never run a COVID. Buying Giramu Dwadi, already in Gavati Denesente, already their body is working in overdrive. At day. Natia no gama van avent van nange and fandu one on four red devon numa. We and what that janja be one mango before she gets worse. Ne a tidde. Kaswa na kugera. 
people just this is what is going on but it is really really sad i would also sue we have to do something right thank you very much Nilfa. now the problem is actually with all your willingness and goodwill that you feel you would, you would want to get on that plane and go and do you would be one in a thousand of course you, you whatever little you do would make a difference but you find that actually you are one Streaming yes. in that sea of, of, of confusion and corruption, and then you get frustrated. Many people have left, you know, abroad, outside countries, overseas countries, and gone back home in the hope and expectation that they are going to make a difference. Many of them have been frustrated by entire processes. But I'm yes. sure each doctor, if each doctor did their bit, uh, you know, small, however, it, however small it is, it would definitely make. A yeah, difference. and educating, educating. I think now what we have to do in Uganda. The, the Ministry of Health really has to now go in, in sense of COVID, we have to go now through health promotion, educate, educate, educate. This is now going to be the way of actually helping our people. I see all this is just spreading. It's not like for one. Now you would understand Absolutely. because but nurses, but nurses were the trained in Uganda. Even in the very good hospitals, right? A very good expensive hospitals in Uganda, the nurses are just like the doctors, very useless. I'm sorry to say this. No, but this is you, this you, is you, how you, I feel. Sorry, I, I mean, I've been I've been first hand looking at uh, patients. Goraba ate omujja njabi yaduka ya ino genda na menasi ya genda na gurane dagara in hospitals that are serious. And, yeah. and for me, I don't One mind. I'm not. I'm not even going to say I'm blowing. I'm not even going to say I'm blowing my whistle. But yes. I can tell you, in the last two weeks, I've actually treated about ten people in Uganda. They have not even gone to hospital, and they're now better. Without okay. spending a lot of money. Okay, when you oh, say, thank you very much. I, I, beg, your, I beg your pardon. Okay, okay. when you first say is the medication is cheap, the treatment is cheap. How cheap is the medication? As a nurse, after advising, advising, how cheap is the medication? How much is the medication? Because where, where, where I'm saying where these guys have become extortive, because Basazewo, Katevin to Gamba and to cook medical belly, critical vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin. There is nothing good like taking that naturally. Right, you could belly and get your country, but my infusion of vitamin C, vitamin D. No, we have all these kind of things. No, but what for? Seriously, what for? Cut that down. Or would it the air you're not saving the same Never to buy so many money is profit making now. Nenga web is a nego, I'm sorry, I call him profit making for all the Kurala COVID no far. Absolutely. And we have had doctors die actually now. Yeah. No, Nilfa, thank you very much. Please stay there. We might just come back to you. Haj Karim Karisa and Abba I've seen some hands coming up. Haj Karim Karisa, simply because of the network and Ruhama might decide to go Ruhama. Uh, let's just get a chance to hear from you. Or you know, who are professionals who are in the front line with the media, uh, being in charge of a media team, even actually, we're talking about deployment of journalists and so on. Probably let's start with your experience with COVID. What has this second wave been like for you? It has been tough. Is was... the network clear now? Am I, yes. am I hard? Yes, we can hear you very well. Is that okay now? Yes, we can hear you very is well. Is it okay? Yes, it is. So much. Yeah. The experience there is so Yeah, the experience is so tough. Mm. And uh, why to give first me being a, a media and relating to many people tell you that lost who have been so influential in uh, Salam TV and other related medias like Voice of Africa, PAL, they have left uh, the, 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 the Sheikh Mutambalas, the Tafsir, all those have been close sheikhs to us. And we have lost many, we would say. So it is a big experience. I closed it to my family. Uh, we have had, I think, uh, a case to our elder brother, Ayub, and we have the first wave was tough also. It took my two elder brothers, well known to you. And uh, 
the experience, the tough experience is from, uh, from the, the family of St. Amu. Uh, because we grew up together. That Hakim you see, uh, the mother, as you know, I have an elder brother called Muhammad Kalisa, they are talking about. Yes. Uh, he used to work in Greenland Bank with the uh, Isaac sent him, mm -hmm. and we are, we are sharing a house. Muhammad and, and uh, we were, he was a brother, the Hakim, the, 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 the Nancy who is in India now, and uh, Nakai, who has died today. Yeah. It is a huge experience. In Zengaban, Peter Muizi, Muizi, by that time I was at Makerere University, Ngabanda Banga professional student. Mm -hmm. So Ngabam Peter Muizi. Eriyinya ndoza liko miele ro hakim uh, nakai mama wa fomurungi a very huge experience. Then the second experience is in our family at Seke, uh, mahbuba uh, family ya jimani burungi Abdul Wahid ba Sheikh ba Fe, abu uh, beba kuzwa Dr Anas Kalisa ba Sheikh abu naoba wete wondo zasimba yoro aliro na iba muzise. Your family na is so much affected. Really, it is so bad. After seeing all of this, I had to, 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 to move online completely. And I'm operating far deep in the village. And I had to move online experience adding on what the colleagues have said. And uh, it's real, real, real personal experiences of Muntu Zayogera that can be documented. Nebo uh, Gendok Funorira, we need to sensitize our communities. Nga media to chizu de nyo about to affect your feeder your dara. Teba food day yo, soaps, ministry nebe gezako, nebe to kolachi, uh, ebi into vinji, ebi to tabuseko, ayogera mazima, taja kuli diziwa, ayogere vichamu, naya. Garo Kurimba want to excite the community to go very To the extent in the, uh, almost sixty-five percent about what believing fake news war coso. Oh did Nature and the media is a fizzimo tan the co kuaba mu kwaka to no or kwa gara may being about many competition yeah fair media and so on and so forth. Nganabo wins of Kravanga certain media is misleading a community. Nakiriza. Na hosting of Montu, Nora Wangabia, you get a mutuf, a later communities of Fobzibu. So it's mm Gambesh -hmm. or Tuchi Rabia, Momidia Zafe, and is going to cause a huge, a huge problem. But Tademo ethics is a fe, Neturban to Murimo Munene, and dear houses. We are in humanity, members and one to a fetch Gambesho, a brother Kaira. Uh, Jaja wa fwa midi ya chigambe chochino kutunuri wamu nyo 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 ate tuchikolireko omurimu omu nene orenso ongei. A few uh, big medias zivu dayo kuwanti zisigara ku ethics na ye media yusise sirise mwosuvi nanti yandi bade vayo mchise la chino ato gindo kurabi vita kuwata gana atelwe singoku vayo na hewe ulaba nga mkasera kante fude yo to look into the, these things. So, Kravan to Muntu Najana to Rafa, a full hour. Abuza Abuza community. Ayongero Kutta Bantu. Really, you see Sinesigaranga, yes, it is. I told Gendo Kuraba, if you treat Agisa, I take Vudeo with a strong arm. Echigambe, Chinene, Nga, Mumidia houses, a fe, or Kravan to Chigambe, or Chiruanako. So, Nakara, I can sober of Kogerako, Kenzu de Mubisera, you know, to COVID affecting the some families because. You know, with Zimu families, the Zimu of one to the Zikuatagana, or Mulimu no got COVID, wait at a conventional effort. People to come as a team, people to come out as a family. Now, get no crab or Rusi Abamu, Tebafiri Duaco, Family Romu, a Vudeo, a Rad Day, no Ravanga and Diva da Tasiwa, Nayo of one to families in the Zikuragana. A Chigambecho, to Chizu demu families in Yenji, no Ravida Dalan, the Sobroqua example. There is one family, a member, young could be the simu, Nagam and again, a war brother wange, or Soboro Kumu Jako ambulance, or gain de or Yambeko Kumam a fa, ye taga kuanga genda mudwariro. But this person, Tasubra Kogako, a brother, is going into distant people. 
Eyo experience nene e, tulaga nchi enkola gana ya fe urusi mu families chitu viri deka abantu wa fe. It's a big experience nchifunye mu bantu banji. Then I have got I think three families uh, kasembira yudala experience gender vye wabu singa wabu konyeko uh, three families nga abantu wafabavu deyo uh, uh, abavu de msize wero at least in Nevada, and Baba immunizing that they are well okay. We know that we manage to use our zero power. But we are skeptical. We manage to use our zero power. We are not going to use our zero power. We are not going to use our zero power. We are not going to use our zero power. We are not going to use our zero power. Bama zoku banti bama nyingi liji wa wangara na uburwadi. Katiba jabo bali immunized, bali burunji, bali, bali vaccinated. Katurutu kamu families neza fezawa. Neba ruwara, neba kwao. Families nga satu zema nyi. Zoni nabali down. Baka mbagenze wa famu abamu. Na inga abanaba vudeo mu ya baku mu Amerika. Mu ya vudeo mu UK. Abantua abu baba zewa anu mu holidays vana nge. Chira bika fechi nitu chitu yengi na mugu yengi zina mchiru demu. Mula bika mugu ino amazo kufuna nemi bile jichiru wanyi sa. There is a huge problem. So akagamba kuna ko. Ninja gana ko tuka kone komu discussion is a fe. Haji Kaliza. Haji Kaliza. Yeah. Naam. Haji Kaliza. Uri media manager. You are in charge of a team. Salam TV. Havana. Bo deploying a veru. What sort of measures have you put in place to protect these reporters? Uh, first of all, we make sure that a chiso kera dara to 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 work every week. Every week, to you know, when to to have a tera o amaruari ro, to have young girls mo insurance ya fe. Okura bantu issue ya COVID a bit expensive. Na ito a young girls mo okura bantu every week work every wa. A choko bili to work in desa to work in desa okura bantu bagenda nyomo field. Who are possible? Tugeza ako kurabanti uh, online. Online che tugeza ako kusingi la dala. Kurabanti bagenda yo most. Bagenda yo nyo at the same time. Ni tukeendeza their time being in the field. At least umuntacha abira mufield for more than maybe three to four hours. Onazu kuse kuna jana ako la kufa kusawe mu kwa gada at least by saa umunana. Avenga ako mieo. Then the rest could go on. Ni tukola shift sezo. Okongero kuyamba abantu bafe no kurabanta at least emergence emergencies wezili okurabanti to funa ate to bajuza ne forms on a daily basis forms ngaziraga ba, fa, families ze bavam wali yo burwadde teri yo burwadde what is happening at home people yeah, are relating the information here about what to keep the agricultural so obo so subira bana kubuli lecho obajuza <laughs> oh, of course, but you can get like maybe you can get 30 40 percent of the correct information. Nechiba Yamba or Nova Zena to Gambo Tuf to in a case A, B, C, D, and to Gamanta one day or you work over it to do this. Nayinga, Chetukule, and Bezenyo, or Kuraban together, Kokuan to Kabira because of a fee. Ate Aba Wana Aba Funye over what day. It is upon us, Okravanti, we treat them maximumly. Okravanti, Basu Rokubanga Bauna, I take the number of Funa cases, Chirunji Bana Bato, and Zedja Jawa, when Zaba Singh, Miak, and Zemsa Jamukuru, Nayanga, at least the voices of Ubi, Nayango Kuara, Barra Day. For example, if I can give a case in Goje Connects Media Yona, where we have over 350. Musalam TV permanent ones, I would buy. Now, yeah, out of I think around 17. What one thing that they test for negative, that we come here, we have to take a look at what So together, as much as possible, okay, because they say we have office. Uh, no government measures because they say we have to follow it. Cutting us staff now at our staff by uh, 50. Our singer, but online, especially the editorial. My sister from TV, I 
special editorial we have a single club and most of the time together but it and other departments a production so on they are working at home together and tuba tear some guys in their houses we put uh, wi-fi and everything for those that can work from home if we can proceed something we are in front thank you people to inform thank you very very much barakallahu fikum kasim juba ndaba uchari wa guru wa wa niso mkono I'll just read this quick message here and get Salim Masoro to come on. We should actually be wrapping our program. It's 10 o'clock. Just to remind you, this is uh, Come, Let's Talk with me, Kasim Kaira, live on 75W Radio and on Uma Connect on YouTube and on Zoom. Haji Abekawesi says, Mputu is one of the biggest challenges. Then Nozako are so-called bloggers, many of whom have turned the whole thing into entirely a political issue and are misleading people. It's absurd that in this day and age, where we have all the tools to verify information, those looking for cheap popularity of to take it up. Uh, Salim Masoro, you are on. Uh, if you can come on quickly, and then I'll go to Abu Fatima. Salim Masoro, I can see you are there. Uh, your experience with COVID, please. So keep it sweet, uh, sweet and short, please. Shekaila, mine is just a question. Again, our council, I'll get there before Sister Nilfa. Uh-huh. Uh, still, the okay. question is what I was saw. Namalo ali lagari awe Uganda. It's a quick question. Sebo chise o. Yes, kai se o then tujaku tujaku muzal kanso if we can and then. Masoro, don't go yes. away. Just stay on. Yes. Yes, para kabafik. Uh, the question is, uh, tu yambi tu tu tia oklabati tu sovola oksu winga kumalo ali lagamu. Ah, uh, katinge yo doctors clinic yawe sebo ku zemu jaku nso nywa jaku bogera. Because these these are the hospitals that are misleading our people. My sis, my two sisters went there two weeks ago for testing for COVID. Uh, they gave them false information. It very positive uh, to make sure and you have a jacko center. First of all, Baba Saba eight hundred thousand That is one point six avant Babiri. Katweva Mala, never have false results, and Tivaina COVID, Natavaina COVID. Kati mukuba sindike waka uh, bagende ba kule self quarantine ne baba wa edagala dibate taga na kwe taga baba wa dexa cipro amoxicillin ne hydroquinone on oba chloroquine kati wali ne baba mwangere yako septrini ono mla ne baba mwa um, zit magnesium au watimpeke zia uzaluguto kolo kwa yake nchi uluguto runuma kati amalowa lidonga gongola mo muntu alimu doctor o manyenti o muntu ono ali well well educated on what he's doing na soka kwa misleading information ndio limulwa denga tori akasente ne bakatwala ne bakuweddaga leri tategerekeka simanya vitamin C wo sola no genda wali no nyo mchungwa no funa vitamin C in your body abantu bano tubakoze tutia uh, mu mbere yo kubanti twagala kubasuwinga wakati chai ko bubi buitiride no buyai kaso france i'm sure you are, you are listening it's your dad gabi actually it's a kind of test case actually kasi mtuba zimsimo ukora if you could put together yourselves then case in asia she has offered and she has actually provided all the details i've taken them uh, we can try and see if we can take up a case as long as what will adequate evidence in aga whatever has been suggested or said salim masoro your okay okay seven okay okay uh, mother of orphans i know chat ama say we ba mukebera covid mm Doctor Lu yaja na kebera abantu to obo na covid. Yakutuseko yaina covid yobati yaina. Right. I think I'll try to get back to her. Maruge ndi wasabi. Shekza idi tebali na baba wa false information. Baba guzaka to wasali masoro. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bana sali. Sali ya sali so kula ba Sheikh Qasim Qayyim mganda yange. Wewe bali na kuteka hiyo program weno. Um, Ekisokera eh, dala. Munda yetu kya ino buzibwe wa fe Uganda nga era mbera bwe tambula. Ndi wano ndi ndi US ndi Boston. Amen. Eh okay. Ndi Boston ya eh, city of Jitakton. Yes. 
E soko kulike yoku mkoro wa birali. So wanko wadimu wa wandeke magida. Kakati ya chukyo. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Kakati, obuzibu wetu kia ina sensitization ni Uganda teri uo. Obate mara. Mm. Orenso nganti, nina avantu nze wali omu kade wange. Kade wange. Ah, ah, nga nga. muruwade, chifuwa chimuruma, tiki. Na ye, nageza konzo kugira na imu na kuzino. Waga manti, oba ebin ubo wa inzo kuba covid ngatibagara na chiulira mm kugamba bantu bafpe simanyengere oba ba sensitizing abatya oba tibabugulire kintu gonda abdukali mutayo gede ko kitufu abantu basinga kutwara mawulire gatali matufu na abantu nyine bya politics bwe bya jamu ne wallahi tuino kwa uwo bwadde ne politics oride abantu bagatte bintu bibiri bagatto bwadde kizibwe kiriye wafu ne bagata ne politics Obuwa de bubera bubwa dene politics ya avira avira politics. Neka tibuli kintu cho no rokuvanti ya bamu orusi. Government inga po jima nyinti ya zee. Evi kurabi ayo na vikibyo na. Teba agara kuhuli la kintu cho na government keva gambie. Atina ama kunguma government ibe nyini na vote teba ina mazime ngeri jibo gira mwe vitu. Bage na nebo gira kuvintu. Na ulilo mchara nga yugira juzi ngeri jiba gendo kugaba mwe. Evintu yoku ya mbaba ante vye mmeri. Ni iwa le evi gambo vyo no vila vangali mbabuli imbi. Uhuli di mbubo baka kensa bagenda kubategekira bagenda bakagizi munyu ibintu abantu bubanga barwadde temukole ibyo kakati fuwano mu US cyo kurabira ke cyo kumvi wallahi babali bagabira abantu stimulus checks tebaya gura mwandi ubani baga babugabya abantu bonna kubanga bali bakimanye nti obuzibu obuzibu buyingira densi eno yizenga emergency si kintu kyakwejalabya wabura kintu kyabuzibu ekyo kubiri Nabantu bangebe njini nabaganti ya ah, mugende, mufune, baba geme. Wallahi baga ndo tuka maruwari ilo. Nange njia kuno kura yunga kasi mbano kode yo. Baga ndo chirudu. Yeah. Ne baga ndo teri dagala. Ne baga ndo ndo jezanta. Na ine baba gamba nti. Na yo nti baga la vantu. Nga wezi miaka makumi atano baso kwa baba geme. Na ye wali wumu sa wumu. Na baga ndo ya ah, te wali dagala. Echubachi baga mbabu gandhi. Kakati, obuzivu obuli wa bantu wa kubagenda kola bacha. Kubanga, for your experience, wana kasimu. Wanu, okuvore bata andi. Fui, kurona yali wanu muyu, eh, si wangwa hinga bantu wa fwa. Yeah. Na hivu bata andi kukugema bantu. Allah na hivu zomu na asasira. Oku, abantu nevali kira uku. Fwa, ili nja uru, buli omu ajira vila dala anti dala. Allah ya isa mkugema bantu. COVID na asoka alikira uku, abantu uku fwa. Nika kati fwa bantu wa fwa. Mbade mpuli liza wa mauli le ga NPR. NPR. Nga vanga mbanti. Afrika yona yona. Abantu wa baka funa vaksini. Bali wanu pasen. Mm-hmm. Akonye kone ku Uganda na akona kone ku Nirwanda. Uwilide. Kuwaba da yogiranga alimu West Africa. Ne, ne, ne DRC. Ne obuzivu obuli huo. Abantu wa fwa funa vaksini. Vaksinationi. Basu buru kujambi wako. What has happened is many African countries have been frustrated by yeah. Western countries, by developed countries. One, okay. importing the vaccines because many of them took all the vaccine stocks and they are releasing mm-hmm. it very slowly. The second yeah, thing, yeah. promise Jevakura, because the, uh, through the COVAX, through the COVAX uh, uh, arrangement, by the mm-hmm. 30% and African countries were supposed to pay for 30%. As a result of 60%, the 60% of immunized or mm-hmm. vaccination, they would have mm-hmm. a better place for the populations to be able to survive. Right now, oh, yeah. Uganda is sort of receiving 866,000 vaccines. Mm. And mm-hmm. Since then, the promise oh. is to receive another batch. Which is about Allah batch. If you are looking to vaccinate 30% of the population as the basic, vaccinating. Western countries have gone for 60 to 70% of vaccinating. African countries, mm-hmm. 30%. Or what to say is that we are comparing. We are really yeah, tewari, tewari. part of the frustration has been the Western countries which are holding the vaccines that was later would they? The vaccines are also Avaso Kokuzeso Kate de Magaga, at the same Javu Abuchiri. Wallahi, Wallahi. That are there in, in, in countries like Uganda, we are struggling to access what would, what would be enough 
even of someone who didn't get any in Gabo Yefana, Ghana. Up to now, That's a 1% still, uh, Gambi. Probably in countries like Uganda, we haven't even reached 1%. Of a population mm -hmm. of 35 million, we have 866,000 vaccines. You, you see what that actually means. Actually, uh, Agassi Africa, you're not. Agassi Africa, you're not. Africa, <laughs> number one percent. Yeah, Wallahi. Yeah. As I can see you are back, I think you needed to answer the question, uh, the question that uh, had been raised. If you can quickly do that, and then I'll go to Marhaba and we wrap up the conversation tonight. But it is very clear from the conversation I'm hearing in the chat room that this is a much, much bigger topic that actually cannot be covered in one day. I think for next week, inshallah, we will have to come back but concentrate especially on the issues that Salim Masura has raised, the issues of the vaccines, the vaccine politics, and what is actually going on. How African countries have been frustrated to access the vaccines, even in situations where now they are in dire need. So that is part of the problem. We are getting the second wave. Yes, governments have mismanaged situations. Yes, health systems are struggling, but at the same time, even the vaccines which have made a huge difference. Salim Masura in Boston in the United States says, after the vaccination campaign started, we saw the numbers going down. So there is a correlation between vaccination and the control of COVID cases. Without the vaccines, it is difficult now to control the cases that are going. Frances, back on the question of suing those uh, hospitals that are negligent. Question um, I still say, Banangi, let pe abantu tebagwa mu many kulowoza nti no nothing will change ndabya comment mo chat group or there is no point even taking these people to court the problem is there is a big problem when you do nothing you can we cannot just sit and do nothing case by case is building on and on and on my advice to you is if we, you have people, lawyers like me who are committed to take on this work, you know, please instruct us and we start at least taking it somewhere. Kubanga, every time we keep quiet, it's not going to go away. Twina issues in Tetuina vaccine. Now yet Twina even a lot of clinical negligence. In cases, I know in Uganda, they don't, the cases are the clinical negligences. They're not there. It's like, as much as we have them here in abroad countries. They've started playing God. So if that system is not checked, if they do something like that, this is a human rights issue. This is a health issue. They will not stop until there is a Gambia test case. So uh, put my contact details in, 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 yes. in the chat I group, yeah, my phone, so. my email. I've uh, yeah. got a firm in the Kampala. We have a team of so lawyers there. Uh, we have a firm here in the UK, but I am working in both jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. Come approach us. Let us see what we can do. We cannot just let everything go. If we don't have instructions from you, we can't act for you. Kati, Fantastic. that's Thank all I can much, say for now. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Kasim Jumba, I'm sure you've heard that. You've heard it from the person, from the council herself. I think it's about taking up the issue. Marhaba, you are the last person in this conversation tonight, and then we'll wrap up. Becca Chinja, I can see the huge conversation on vaccines that you are beginning in the chat room. I'm sure that's not for tonight. Uh, it's next week, inshallah, where we can start uh, tackling that issue deeply. Marhaba, welcome to the conversation. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Keke. Sebu Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in the case of 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 COVID, case of the 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 
Ese kuku nanga ba ni bamo jako samna ganti ai nom sai maleri ya mungi nyonyo nyonyo nyonyo. Yatu tegu ni yatu tegu ni yatu ni wadi ba minimization yenda. Nenzi kiri za akani ngad doctor ni doctor maleri yono atua la banga tio kupira movie yo kupira ganti ai nanga ganti tu wakati wenye nakunga muna na ne kumi. Nakunana na ne kumi. Ne muga ba na yo mwa no se boko yoke rako. Ya ingideru wa mkaga anu sawa nyezi ya chilo. Na alu wala jaka ungezi. Na nganti akatu genzo kebila walu wensi. Wallahi doktor ya nganti. Walu wensi ye yenja ule ya mulu nye. Kwa 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 on the global scale, or katu walu no weira likubato hula na kila tu maji kuna tu kiri. Mwai kucha ni vaga mani kakati ni vaccines manyo vayo gedu wako eno guu ni vaccine ya guu ni vade kwa nye Uganda ya India. Ni vaga ni European countries ite zijia ku recognize inga guu ndi yeyo. Vaccine ya guu ndi yeyo. Vaccine ya guu ndi yeyo. Haba kipa wetu maindi ya very well grounded medicine. Bako zi ya guu abdala. Kila ba jauga ni vana abajiwa da Afrika. Abla tibaina tibaina jipa jipa kikiliza umuru ana duki la kugamba inwadhe jitu kendo kujamu worries se tulina in fact jia kubani ni njino kusinga the active virus yenyi ni recoverable na yeno cycle wiki kuku jetu ita mungu oge nemo duaro nenga weira diki la ho jo jo tu tu chaina confidence ya mtu ba kora simani simani ba chuo ge duaro kuneba ni kugaza worries tulina kati nda chinga komedi simani ba chuo Uganda yoka jitu kuge duki kia upenda ni ba doctors. They are no longer bound by the ethics. Ne ethos is that the first duty is to care. The first duty of any doctor is to care. Ne kat the first duty of any doctor is about making money. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. The children by doctor boka wabula. They are just following the line of those, you know, the bigger, you know, pharmaceutical agendas and the force, invisible forces behind the pharmaceutical agendas. Zilimiti nanti mubanga. Yes, so we know that Nigeria is not going to be able to control the virus. We are going to be able to control the virus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I think for next week, I'm going to try and get some uh, government officials. We will try to get a government official to come uh, to come on, inshallah, and some MPs as well, because I think this is the time now to start having this conversation. But also doctors. We'll try to get uh, doctors. I know I might, I might be able to get about two doctors that we can bring on. And we challenge them to the very issues. Rather, sometimes once you listen to their side of the story, you might actually change your mind about the whole thing. Sheikh Awe, probably you are the last person I'm going to have tonight. Subhanallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, the, this is an excellent program. Um, program Nujinira Jazakumullah Khairan, Okbant and Kozeshi Mujtadewo. Zemkrabo Kwange. I'm glad that next week to jump on to tackle the same issues. Even to store the example the Zerumia, Zinyora, Ziyungura, Maziga, Atera, Zera, Ikiriza, Kurudor, Lala. I think a saga of Kurati Sakara could be done. Nangan in a personal, you know, personal experience. The MBCM could come as a result of happening in Uganda. Can we hear that personal experience? Because this whole story was about the personal experiences. Um, um, Kakati, um, in terms of personal experience, you know, even my mom, a child more decati, Nayoko Gambera. Ya tuwa liwa mduwa liro, kutuwa kani wa mga mga antitaina oxygen, then after us mga mga wa ataze mune mga mga ina COVID, tukoze, tukoze, bakoze CT scan and other thing, mga mga, you know, most likely ina chia ina COVID, liwa mduwa liwa mduwa liro, edala, liwa mga mga mduwa liro, singa, lija kusinga koko. Edwa liwa hamuku, haba mga liru kuma, liru mkulimu kuma liru wali mga wagedi ya koko egamba. Neba mtu sawo, teba neba mkola, teba neba mkola ene, you know, bako ze city scan, inga teba neba konfani nga taina COVID, neba mteka, na haba mtu wa COVID. Oteke, haba ina COVID. Na, na haba, ati mwa isolation, neba mujaka haba mtu wa, na teba kiriza mtu ena kumulaba, at the same time, not have any help. 
omuntu omukuru omukadde nga tainza kuyimirira tainza kwechuza tainza kola chi then the following day amadisa uh, magule empewo abalaba bakolola bakola chi then the following day we're going to call a test test again or could that yeah yeah can be a piece yeah ngachi ngata ina covid ka subhanallah sent us to tell to mujeyo na ye experience the nafuna ngolieno ogeza ko kufuna amawulire bagamba chino bagamba chiri nga their interest is mainly to send ati wo gamba abali ganti banange challenge you know challenge the doctor it dare ba mwa ba mwa dechi ba mugambie chichino okay okay the twins are mugira we gamba they cannot challenge the yeah. doctors yeah. we have a problem yeah. oyo oh, mm. then my brother ina na rwala na amalo oluna kulum oluna kulum mu dwali the only one night bill ngabakusa ngabakusa suspected covid Never saw Billy up at the wheel in H2 to Quigamba. After Quigamba, ah, H Gambo, Chip with Rita, maybe the Lavinja. I don't want to, you know, to prolong the, you know, the program. I know we have to finish. The younger, you know, Sheikh Sheikh Haira, this is a very, this is a very, very good program. You know, Nag, to Sana, to Koleji, to be Ogiroko, Atera to Igirize, over to Togerena, and to Bafe Kampala, to Lavenga, to Koleji, but to to bow to magazine kwa gamba to change the situation something that you raise is very very important you have a doctor yeah. is challenging our soul you should know the kind of treatment your person is getting those are not very very what you have kwa bantu bafukubanga the upbringing in Uganda you will know um so thinking about somesa cannot be questioned that's the way we were brought up but now we get exactly. to a time where when ethics have been put to question and people are doing things very carelessly mm. then it just means yeah. our level of intervention now has to come in to make sure that we actually help our people back home abari eno okuba ku bantu abari awaka ask even to speak to the doctors let it be on loud yes. speak at least wali ba manyina bo what you are sort of challenging what you are sort of asking let's know the sort of yeah. questions that we should ask actually probably next week inshallah we should have a guide from the from the doctors the neil fal kasujas and, 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 and the others abari kuno yes but we have to know what sort of questions can i help my people back home to ask yes exactly. my person is in hospital i think these will be practical skills that we can actually apply on a day to day basis sheikh we have a new 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 can send you on kiara by na mazedo ganti send you go na you find a mitiana all the way from the united states you know cases that are comparing now i think are making all the difference farida mutesi assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam hello farida mutesi farida mitiana Hello Farida. Okay, we come by name Mariam Mariam Texas. We wanted to finish with someone in the US. Mariam Texas are you are you able to speak uh, to Unzike to see where I want to find her Mitiana are you there? Onanda bagenze quite silent. Ndabiyo Aida. Ya kuunzika no mchara. Um Aida, do you mind unmuting yourself please? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Mjara Maryam Jeba ni kwenye. Alhamdulillah sebo na we Jeba le. Alhamdulillah. What the one case you near covid to the covid experiences. I'm sure you've been listening in no with that conversation we had that time. Ese wo mpade kulira cases za penyingi. I'm sure saba de wo mkutandika na bade nimiza wo duhuri wano. Ni Sheikh Zaid ni ya <laughs> sababu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tubachari abara mu atatu kume atutasu bwadde kuma na embe baziza nyo thank you very very much for keeping it at uh, w radio 75 and uh, umba connected akaongeza karero as we come and we talk with me Kasim Kaira discussing covid 19 it is very clear from today's conversation that we will have to come back next week inshallah looking into the nitty gritty now of how uh, to deal with this particular pandemic next week inshallah i think we'll be delving to see 
the hospital bills and how to challenge them. We had uh, a council today, Council Francis, who has helped a lot to sort of uh, throw some light. So you know, out of negligence, many of which actually are sort of very negligent in the way that they are doing things. But there's also ignorance on the other hand, where it has become very clear that even prescriptions, treatment over something that is not supposed to be the case, making money out of this particular case. We will try next week, inshallah, to get the government of Kuchu on the program. Uh, I, I, I promise that I will do my best. I know I will be able to reach out. And uh, probably now that the conversation is getting bigger, it will be an opportunity for them to come and highlight. If we can't get a government official, we will get a member of parliament. At least one World Health Committee, Bafrum is a very damning report. I think that's the one thing about this parliament that is very beautiful. The kind of reports, whatever detail that is in there, you will be surprised. The amount of detail that has gone into this, trying to put these private hospitals, especially, to task, to deal, and you know, to sort of answer for what they have been able to do. The charges, is it is so, so criminal sometimes, it's border on criminal sometimes. Uh, 127 million that we have had, a bill of 105 million, and then even for a treatment that is, you know, negligent in, in, by, 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 all, uh, by all definitions. I think it really says a lot, and I, I think probably having these conversations is going one to help. Three and Boku are informed about what is going on. Two to know what sort of action to take. Because sometimes to be a position, go to Europe, go to America, go to Bakubiraka, see, go to Bakubiraka, see, and then you have to kill yourself over a particular treatment that probably could have been avoided. The circumstances you and the Paragon. I thank you all for having spared the time and come to this. Remain Kasim Kaira here. I hope to see you next week, inshallah. Keep it right here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And have a very good night. Thanks for your time. Thank <laughs> you.